Hello? 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 Yes, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Yeah, why don't you give the answer? Yes or no? Please give your voice. Yeah, whether here or not, because I'm here to make you the class. So today is the first class. Yesterday you have the class, but for marketing, today is the first class. So uh, for MCOM, paper three, marketing management. So what you are going to deal in this uh, five days class? Uh, it is not like a general class. We are going to teach you in depth of the subject. So we are, we'll be giving the overview of the subject uh, for the five units. So today we are going to talk about uh, the unit wise and uh, brief discussion about the first unit, second unit, and third unit and fourth unit and five unit. So in the first unit, you are going to talk about the introduction to marketing and the marketing management, marketing concepts, strategic management and marketing process, marketing environment, consumer market and buyer market, marketing segmentation and targeting and positioning market mix. And the second unit covers the product decisions. Concept of product, product mix decision, brand decision, new develop product development, development strategies, uh, product life cycle strategies. And third unit deals with the pricing strategies, pricing policies and constraints, different uh, pricing methods, product line pricing and uh, new product pricing. And the decision channel, nature of uh, marketing channels, type of channel flows, channel functions, channel corporation, conflict, competition, Conflict and competition, direct marketing, telemarketing, tele internet marketing, internet shopping. And the first, uh, fifth unit, the last unit, dealing with the promotion decision, promotion mix, advertising decision, advertising objectives, advertising campaign, advertising effectiveness, sales promotion, and publicity, and the sales for decision. So, either you follow uh, any marketing book related to marketing management and uh, uh, like uh, Ramsam Namakumari or etc. or uh, Sher Laker etc. Whatever the book you can follow, that is that you can follow. And uh, let us go for the unit one, which is uh, comprising of introduction to marketing concepts and uh, marketing process, marketing environment, buying behavior, marketing segmentation, targeting and positioning, introduction to marketing mix. Now, first of all, what you have to see, what is the marketing uh, introduction to marketing? Now, what is marketing? Now, how you make a market? Why you make? A, uh, why do you go for a marketing? Why a company makes a to go for a marketing? Now, when a company is producing a product, it is a decision to market the product. It means <coughs> it has to show the product to the customers or consumers. In what they are producing, you only know, but the consumer doesn't know what you are producing. And it is known that where the product is available. So that's why marketing is a place where the exchange of goods and services take place. So we have the marketing mix, what you call as the product price, place and promotion, which are going to dealt in the next coming uh, topic. Now, this related to marketing, that is uh, marketing is uh, dealing with the product and services. So when you make it hence, that is uh, Product and services is manufactured by a company, but it uh, ownership will be transferred. When the ownership is transferred is when you sell the product to the consumer. When the consumer pays the money for you and you sold the product or 
good or services to the consumer. So, tangible goods and intangible. Tangible goods are uh, one which uh, can be uh, seen and touched, but intangible is one which cannot be seen and touched. So, like uh, uh, services, schools, educational institutions, hospitals, churches, etc., that is intangible. When you come to the tangible, we can say you are. Uh, 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 what you call food you eat, the material you touch, the pen you write, all these are related to the uh, uh, tangible. And when you talk about uh, the transfer of a little of goods at the time of purchase creates ownership utility. So when you talk about the dis uh, what is the time taken by and where the product comes, production comes, place comes and ownership comes, that is the position of the product. So. When you talk about defining a, a marketing, marketing is a, a physical form uh, where the exchange of goods and services take place in terms of monetary value for a need of satisfaction, want and need and satisfaction in terms of money. So different uh, authors have given different definitions, but uh, uh, Philip Kotler has given the definition that is uh, the transfer of goods and services, the, uh, the exchange of goods and services in terms of money for need and satisfaction of the consumers uh, in terms of uh, monetary value. So making the goods and services available at time and places that a uh, customer needs and uh, pricing goods and ser uh, services to reflect cost, competition and uh, customer's ability to buy. So it is not that you produce a product and send it to the market, but it should be able to buy the product by the customer. Means it's an affordable price, etc that should be taken into consideration. That is, customer should be satisfied when he buys the product and uh, satisfaction that takes place. Now, what is the difference between a buying and selling you are talking about? Now, when you are talking about buying and selling, uh, the terms buying and selling looks like, uh, uh, sorry, selling and marketing. Uh, when you talk about buying and selling, but uh, there is a little bit difference. So selling in terms of the seller, buying in terms of marketing. So when you talk about marketing, uh, starting point is the factory where the selling takes place and the focus on existing products. Now the producer will produce the product what he wants to produce and but uh, and he means by selling and promotion, he will sell the product to whom you sell and the end is profit through volume. So selling in terms of uh, the producer, and marketing the product. So marketing is in terms of the buyer. So starting point is the marketplace where the buyer and uh, uh, buyer and seller comes together and exchange the product. But when you say focus on customer needs, without a customer need, there is no use of the product to produce. So it needs on the customer needs, what the customer actually wants and integrated through marketing. So marketing is where you talk about the advertising, sales promotion and uh, the profit through satisfaction. Once you buy a product, you get satisfied, again you rebuy it and uh, you will be loyal to the customer, company and, and the company will be loyal to you. So mostly we say that uh, product uh, loyalty and uh, <laughs> So when you talk about the evolution of the marketing, we say it depends on the production, product, sales, marketing, relationship, etc. But when you talk about this uh, production that is uh, relating to prevalent attitude and uh, approach to the consumer favor product that are available and highly affordable. And other one is improved production and distribution and uh, availability. And Uh, Tata product or uh, um, Samsung products or Sansi products without marketing, without any advertisement, you will buy the product because it's standard quality, what you are going to have. Another one is sales that will buy the product only if the company promotes sell these products. So the sales will, consumer will buy if it is promoted by the company. 
So, if you are not promoting the company uh, product, the customer doesn't know what uh, the actually the product is. So, by creating advertising and selling, you are overcoming the consumers' uh, resistance and convince them to buy. And marketing, which uh, focuses on needs and wants of the consumer, the so needs and wants of the customer. So, based on this, the marketing will take place. Place on the. Sir, I understand that you are phone. You need to pump it in a WhatsApp line. Ah, understand. Will work. And uh, relationship of marketing is uh, based on the focus on needs and target markets and uh, deliver prayer values. So when you are making is uh, relationship, uh, uh, company should have a long term relationship. It is not that my product is sold; it is uh, it is well settled. No, after selling the product also, the company has to take care of the product and uh, the customer also because. customer should be loyal then only he can buy the product now when you talking about uh, uh, earlier what is the marketing we have done and now what we are doing in the present and now we are making the relationship market nowadays so when you talk about uh, the transaction based marketing it is a short term when you take a relationship marketing is a long term and uh, customer service is priority relatively low when it is a transactional based marketing but when you take the Uh, relationship marketing is a key component. Means uh, every time you have to call. Nowadays uh, the relationship marketing is expanding because once you buy a product, you will be taking, uh, you will be giving the mobile number or email ID to the company or to a dealer or wholesaler retailer. So uh, after purchasing, after ten days or fifteen days, the company will be talking to you about talking about the product or services because they want to know what is the product. Uh, so when we are saying about the uh, key component and uh, say contact customer contact frequently every time uh, it should be known and uh, that frequent contact should be there and uh, basic for the seller con uh, consumer interaction so conflict uh, manipulation uh, based on the transaction based any complaint is there it has to be gone through the uh, marketing and the relation will making uh, a contact nowadays uh, due to uh, te te uh, technological development now when you are making any company about the product uh, so they are not coming directly to the home what they are saying they are doing the product and services repairs remotely so they will send a, a otp to you they will uh, through that otp they will enter into your uh, uh, product and they do repair through online so if it is not possible to do online they will come physically and verify that one and they will uh, they will uh, uh, do the repair and send uh, they'll satisfy the customer and the source of quality is primarily from the production but when you relating uh, relationship marketing comes it comes uh, uh, company wide commitment so based on that uh, uh, marketing framework is done so that marketing frameworks uh, basic elements of uh, which consists of uh, target market and uh, marketing mix, uh, mix variables so just now i told you in the starting of the class we marketing mix which is a product price place and promotion if it is services it is a physical evidence and uh, uh, persons and uh, physical evidence people and physical distribution we say and uh, the environmental characteristics which are going to have this uh, should be very planned in the beginning so when you have uh, what are the elements of the marketing strategy of the environmental framework we have uh, uh, target customer uh, product price place and promotion and uh, we have demographic environment marketing intermediaries technological natural environment public suppliers and uh, we see com uh, competitors political legal environment social cultural environment which is going to affect the uh, marketing management that is what we call as internal and external environment like uh, uh economical political legal social cultural all these are the external environment you are going to study now when you are talking about uh, nowadays uh, there is a difference between industrial marketing and consumer marketing so when you are talking about industrial marketing they are b2b and uh, when you are talking about consumer market uh, they are uh, related to the uh, business to consumer 
Now, when you say marketing currency, when you talk about uh, the business to business, uh, geographically concentrated and uh, relatively fewer buyers are there. But when you come to consumer market, geographically spread and uh, mass marketing will be there. And uh, product characteristics, we have technical uh, complexity and computerized, uh, customized uh, products you have in an industrial market. But when you come to the consumer market, they are standardized products. And uh, services characteristics, services are done timely, delivered and uh, availability are critical. But when you come to consumer market, services are timely delivered and available for somewhat uh, uh, are somewhat important for us for the services but uh, when you're talking about the buyer behavior we are involved with the industrial market involvement of cross functional teams in both the buyer and supplier uh, firms uh, and uh, in the when you come to a mar consumer market they have involvement in family members etc and uh, channel characteristics uh, they are in uh, industrial buyer we uh, industrial uh, consumer B2, B2C, it is uh, more directly, but when it's a uh, uh, C2C, it is indirect channels and multiple layers will be there for intermediaries like agents, middlemen, uh, merchant middlemen, and only fewer agents will be there for this uh, uh, B2B. And a uh, promotional category emphasis on personal selling for uh, industrial uh, uh, B2, B2C, and whereas uh, C2C, it is emphasizing on advertisement and uh, price characteristics. Bidding is done in the industrial uh, behavior that what you call as a B2C and uh, negotiating the prices. But when you say consumer to consumer, it is a price on maximum retail price, MRP. So prices will be standardized in uh, B2C. Now, when you say what are the functions of marketing, just now we are seeing that uh, by uh, functions related to marketing are very wide. It is not little bit, but uh, when you talk about the functions, we uh, talk about exchange functions, physical distribution functions, facilitating functions. Now, when you talk about the uh, uh, exchange functions, you say buying and selling. So, when you buy a product or sell a product, are you hearing my voice? Are you hearing my voice? Yes, sir. I don't have any PPT because it is very short duration. Please give your voice so that I can know. Please uh, don't say any message. Please uh, open your mic and say yes. yes sir, anyhow, you are, you are, anyhow, you are sitting in center of the system only. Just open your mic and say yes, we can hear so that I can also know that you are hearing. Yes, sir, hearing. Yes. Just one, one second to give or open your mouth and say that yes, we can, I can hear you. Right. <clears throat> so when you're talking about the... Um, uh, marketing functions, we have exchange function that is which is related to buying and selling. Now, what is buying actually? So, I buy a product where I go to a shop, but I may buy the product or may not buy the product. Just casually go and see the product which are there. But when you are when you will buy a product, when you are willing to buy the product, when you are paying for the product and you buy the product, that is called as buying. Without paying the money to the customer, it says you can't say that is buying. So, ensuring uh, product offerings are available in sufficient quantity to meet the customer demand. That when you are selling, that is called as uh, buying. When the company is producing the product and uh, selling it, it should have enough sufficient demand and uh, should have a price for it. And at any point of time, when demand is there, it should, it, it should sell the product. Now, when you are selling, using advertising, selling, personal selling and sales promotion to match goods and services to the consumer needs. So buying uh, buying is what, what you are doing is, where you are creating a demand for the company. So you are paying them and buying. But when the company is there to meet the demand and selling in terms of money, which matches your through advertising and sales promotion, etc. And when you are talking about this, phys uh, uh, physical distribution, uh, that is uh, transportation and storing. When you're making the product to produce, it is not that it should be in your company itself or it in your warehouse itself. So it should be transported from production to the consumer or production to the agent, production to the agent, middleman and consumer or production agent, middleman, merchant, middleman, distributor or dealer and the consumer, the way you are going to have. That is where you have is transportation, moving the uh, product from their point of production to location, convenient for the purchases. So, you sell from producer to the end consumer uh, directly or through the agents. And you are storing, that is uh, when uh, excess products are manufactured, 
and uh, near, meet the future demand you will you will you will manufacture more products so the excess uh, uh, storage excess products can be stored in a, where, a warehouse until it needs the, needed for the sale and the last one which you are saying is a facility uh, functioning that is standardization grading that is ensure the product is ma uh, maintaining the standard to meet the customer's quality and quantity and its size and weight etc so grading should be done so grading uh, uh, for a uh, edible product grading for electronic product grading for agriculture product so uh, uh, grading for, uh, for for each and every product that you have to standardization grading so based on the grading your product will be known whether good bad or uh, worst so for them another one is uh, facilitating the function related to finance provide credit for channel members or consumer so whether you're going to give the financial stability for your company so you are going to sell it for a credit or for channel members uh, uh, and a uh, financing on credit basis or, or uh, uh, direct uh, cash basis so risk taking dealing with the uncertainty about the consumer purchases so whether the product demand is there or not, you may be knowing but if there is no demand for the product what you'll do so you will take the risk and uh, result from creating the marketing of goods and services so there is no demand for the product but you have manufactured the product what you have to do you have to take the risk today the product is not sold tomorrow it may be sold tomorrow is not sold day after tomorrow is sold but in future there will be having a certain demand for your product that's why you produce the product if there is no demand if you think that there is no demand for the product you are unable to produce the product you may not be producing the product so uh, securing marketing information collect uh, information about the consumers competitors and the channel members uh, for use in marketing decision making so based on that uh, your uh, marketing information system you are going to manufacture the product and uh, market the product according to your needs now when you're talking about the uh, marketing concept which you're talking about the basic needs and wants and uh, of the consumer production value satisfaction exchange transaction and relationship market and uh, marketing in the connecting world so when you're talking about this so what is the marketing concept you have you have need wants and demand so what is the need and want that you have, i think you are read in your uh, ug or uh, in the pg uh, in economics need and want and a demand product value and satisfaction exchange transaction relationship markets so this is related to your marketing answer where your need is compulsory basic needs the food water clothes and shelving want uh, which satisfy you want may not be compulsory food is compulsory clothing is uh, compulsory and a uh, food is needed clothing is needed shelter is needed but want may be satisfying you if you that is have suppose car car you want but you don't have money but you you want it so it want is a desire so that makes you create the demand for the product and uh, give value and satisfaction in terms of exchanging the transaction and relationship and make the market so when you're making the marketing process how you make the process this is a, a market formatting the marketing strategy formatting the marketing strategy market planning market programming allocating a, a budget uh, marketing implementation monitoring auditing and uh, analysis and research systematic marketing process so when you're talking about this how you make the process it is not that uh, you have the money so you make a product and send it to the market it is not like that you go for a research or the basic research that you require so you have to make the marketing process divided into several different ways one popular conceptual is uh, marketing task is strategy formation that is develop the broadest marketing business strategy with the longest term impact it is not that today or tomorrow you take 10 years 15 years 20 years so first you take first five years then you do the business then you expand to next five years then you expand to the next 10, 15 years then you expand for next 20 years so making on the demand you are going to diversify your business are you expand the business that is what is the strategy formation from small to big so we have a large into and you say marketing planning so when you make a long term we say that uh, the plants which are uh, generally stronger are uh, giving important uh, than the shorter term program so don't depend upon a short term programs you have to depend upon only the long term programs where you can be successful see example our uh, indian government 
uh, it's a five year plan. So earlier you have five year plans. So now you say uh, Niti Aayog. So they'll make a plan for next five years. So what is the government of India is going to do in the next five years? Plan five years. It is not that all can be done only at one time. So what they'll do? They split the work in uh, every five years. Means the first year one, first one, second year, second one, third year, third one, fourth year, fourth one, fifth year. That is the objectives which are to maintained that will be fulfilled in the next five years. So in the total objective will be achieved. In the same way, it is not a shorter duration; it's a longer duration. So marketing program allocating budget. Yes, for planning you should have budget. See our Indian government also allocated budget for the five year plan. So that is the developing a uh, making the development of short term program which are focused on integrated approach. So short. Making short term programs will become a long term program. Small small uh, programs will make you to big a long term program. And uh, marketing implementation, the task of getting the market job done. So when your product is manufactured, it should be sold in the market. For that, is monitoring is required and auditing is read. How many products are sold? How many products are manufactured? How many products are sold? How much profit is done? So if there is any change in the product, then you again you go for analysis and research. That is deliberately, carefully acquisition of the examining of the qualitative and quantitative data to improve the decision making so that to make the company to make the decision to in future to produce a product or not so then comes uh, so analysis and marketing research which is very very important crucial for the market uh, marketing of the uh, marketing management Now, when you're talking about the systematic marketing process, you have. So, unless otherwise uh, you have the process, uh, you have the uh, strategy, you cannot implement the uh, marketing process. One is, so marketing analysis that is, uh, depends upon the systematic of marketing process depends upon the five C's. One is customer, company, competitor. So when you're talking about a market analysis, they say five C's. One is customer, company, competitor, collaborator, and context, which you're going to implement for this market analysis. What you are saying is, from that you say market segmentation, target market selection, product service positioning, and uh, we are going in that we are going for marketing mix. That is what we call four P's. That is product or services, place or channel, promotion, pricing. And uh, after pricing, we are going for customer acquisition and uh, customer retention and make the profit. So this is the systematic process where you're going to have for the uh, market. Now, what is market segmentation? I think uh, in the coming topics only we'll come to know what is market segmentation and uh, what is target market selection and the uh, product pricing promo and uh, positioning. When you're talking about this, market segmentation is Segmentation is dividing the market. So according to age, area, income, educational qualifications, that is a totally we say demographic factors. And a target market, who is your target customers? Normally we say target customers are the person who is going to buy your product. Whether your teenager uh, are your customers, or old age are customers, or middle age are customers. And a product and service position, how you position the product? Suppose nowadays what you are saying, you are seeing a newborn baby shops. Have you seen this newborn baby shops uh, anywhere in your area? Anyone has seen the newborn baby shops in your area? Yes, sir, nearby baby hospital. Yes. You may be seeing these newborn baby item shops near to the hospitals. Near to the hospitals because nowadays become a fashion. Earlier in olden days, there is no such a type of newborn baby items. Even if you want to buy a cradle also, you used to ask a carpenter to make a cradle. You don't have any, uh, what you call, uh, now we are saying uh, uh, diapers. These are not there earlier uh, in the olden days. 
just a 10 15 years back there is no this type of uh, uh, diapers uh, which are used for small children now it has become a fashion now everyone is position even a village person also buying the diapers for the newborn baby uh, uh, they are buying a Johnson baby powder, Johnson baby soap, Johnson baby hair oil, Johnson baby moisturizer, etc. But uh, in the olden days, 15 20 years back, this, uh, this type of, uh, of course, Johnson baby powder and Johnson baby oil is there, but uh, we don't have any massage oils, etc. We have only till oil, gingerly oil, that, uh, that uh, if you uh, ma massage uh, the babies, the body will get strong. Now this is the now we are positioning everywhere. Yeah, uh, beside a hospital there is a newborn baby born. Go to there, bring a new class to the newborn baby and uh, uh, new uh, new baby items are sold, etc. You are positioning. Now now not only that uh, young people now the new generation also the mother and father also what they are doing they are not bothering about the cost. They go to the newborn baby shop. Or you bring the product which is required for the newborn baby playing toys, etc. Now, that is where you are positioning, that is uh, even if you go to a shop also, you want to buy a paste also, you will buy see very Colgate paste. You do not see any, any other preferred and other, because your mind is fixed, your mind is positioned in such a manner. So, in that way, you are going to segment the market, that is what you are saying, uh, the uh, systematic of marketing process you take place, depends upon the customer, company competitors, collaborators, etc., what you call as uh, context, what you call as market analysis, that five Cs. So, based on that, we have the segmentations. So, marketing segmentation is there, market uh, target is there, target market we say normally and uh, um, another one is a product positioning that is in the minds of the customer. But uh, when you are talking about uh, the marketing mix, which are the heart of the element, the, the elements of marketing mix, we say, product, price, place, promotion, etc. So, each is a topic which is product, price or place or promotion, place or channel distribution or you can say promotion price, this plays a major role. Now, when you are talking about this, customer require based on your marketing mix, product, price, place and promotion and the customer acquisition take place and you will be having a customer retention also. Though acquiring a customer is more costly than a retentioning a customer. Once a customer comes, the company tries to uh, acquire him and retain him. So, he, the company will make the customer to be very happy. So, uh, royalties, benefits are given, concession is given to the existing customer. So, that he cannot leave the company. Suppose your services is not good, the customers who are there in your company will... Uh, uh, leave the company and buy the other company product. So, you can equate this with uh, politicians also. Politician who thinks that uh, one party is good, they will join first. Uh, but if you think that the company, uh, that party is uh, bad, is not going to win, again they will quit that party and uh, join. But it is very difficult to get that, retain the politician. So, like this, we will wait a profit. If the company's acquisition is good, if the company retention is good, uh, so, the profit come automatically to them. So, so what are the marketing environment we see? So, we have internal environment and external environment. Internal environment is one which is uh, controllable and external environment is uncontrollable factor. So, what are the internal environment? Your uh, land, labor, capital, machinery, etc. And when you are talking about external environment, which is uh, important for the uh, marketing management or uh, which is important for a business person to know. So, when you talk about this, we will be knowing about the competitive environment, we will be knowing about com com political, legal environment, economic environment, technological environment, social culture environment. So, all these are related to the external environment, we can say, which is uncontrollable. Now, based on this, we will say all these are internal environment and external environment can be known only with the environmental scanning and environmental management. Now, what is how you scan the environment? Suppose you want a, 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 want a certificate, you will scan through your mobile or you go to a uh, uh, Xerox center and you scan it and get the printout. But uh, how you scan a, an environment? It is not a small paper or a, a, a small pen. So, how you scan it? There are some activities are there where you can scan the environment related to your uh, marketing. 
that is scanning in the process of collecting information about the external marketing environment to identify the interpret the potential trends so you uh, how you scan it through newspapers through magazines through journals through news uh, through newses so you will scan what is going in the market today will be known only through newspapers what is going in the market uh, today it is known only through only journals magazines that is all related to publication electronic media radio tv etc this will provide you the latest information about the market what the business is going to done what is going to happen based on that you scanning is vitally competent for effective environmental management and you say uh, uh, the firm should be uh, firm's competition should be there uh, co the company should be very competitive and it should be have political legal environment economic environment technological environment social cultural environments and uh, development of a global market place in a com uh, com uh, complicated environmental scanning and environmental management so they have to process uh, many ways uh need to track political developments economic uh, trends and cultural influence anywhere in the world so when you're talking about the competition is and who is your competitor first when you're talking about the competitor we say that uh, competitor is the one who is going to influence the business means uh, he is going to decide the business suppose he is a pure competitor for you suppose you take tata birla vipro mahindra Aditya Birla, etc. These are the companies. You have Tata also. Tata is there, Birla is there, Vipro is there, Godrej is there. So these are the companies. So it's having producing similar type of product or different types of product, but still there is a competition between them. So that creates, that is with one another to satisfy the consumer creates a competitive environment. Marketing decision by each individual firm influence consumer response in the market. So I buy a product of Tata. Somebody buy a product of Birla. Somebody buy with a uh, with a uh, Mahindra. Somebody buy with a, some other uh, company. So what happen is the competition is changing in the market. Somebody buy buy more products for one company. Somebody buy less product from the uh, same company or different company. So the competition is there. So decision making must continually monitor competitors. So you have to make marketing activities, product, that is we say channels, prices and promotion. And when you talk about all this one related to your product, price and place and promotion and uh, uh, when you make the particular segment such as uh, determining the customer demography, that is age or income characteristics are determining the Competitive strategy involving answering uh, questions. So, who is a competitor? Who can be a competitor for your product? Who is going to manufacture uh, similar type of your product? Is anyone is there? No. If anyone is not there, you are a single competitor, single and monopoly, mono uh, competitor. You yourself are producing the product and marketing the product, and uh, these uh, benefits will be given to the customers. So what you do, do, do is that uh, company, uh, the answer of the company should depends upon the firm's responsibility and uh, the objectives of exp expectations of the market uh, pro uh, profit potentially. So based on that, we can, we can be a com we can be competitor with them. And uh, so what the market should be access competitor? So where in the limited resources, that is salesperson, advertising, budget selling, product development, etc. Everyone will see the end product only, but uh, nobody will see the where the product is actually made. So you see only beautiful products which are uh, displayed on the screen. But uh, behind that, who is responsible for that person, marketing of that particular product? So we have uh, a development capabilities and uh, should be responsible for allowing these resources of the area of the competitor. So what they are doing is, uh, uh, they acquire marketers to acknowledge their limited resources and uh, give ad uh, personal advertising, budgeting, making the sales, promotion, product development, capabilities, etc. and so on. So, uh, how should we complete That uh, requires marketers to make product pricing, distribution, promotional decision, etc. and give the uh, firm a complete advantage. So, you have to depend upon your product product, price, place and uh, uh, promotion, I had to create that one and uh, 
that should be product should be a, a competitive product for the others so the another one is a, a political legal environment so the company should have a, a political legal environment the company has to follow the political which is in the uh, in the country the political power uh, political party which in power will dictate the government so government also dictated the uh, business so in that case uh, what is the decision taken by the government towards the uh, public uh, politician uh, political uh, 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 towards the uh, company product and services so uh, nowadays we are seeing uh, this is election movement so we see uh, every statue of a political leader is covered with a cloth and uh, they cannot take any decision related to a particular company. The only one thing is, you should not cheat the government policies. Once the government has sanctioned you to do marketing of your product, so you have to open the system, work for one hour, two hour, so that you That, uh, just a minute, huh? So what you are saying is the political legal and so if, if you are dissing the politi uh, political party what they will do they will take a legal action of the company. So legal legal action means uh, they have to enter into the court of law and get uh, everything uh, done. So you have to, one condition is to uh, protect the consumer rights, ignorance of the law, ordinance and regulations of the failure to compile with them can result in fineness. Suppose you are not paying the taxes to the government so it will be loss for your company. Uh, not paying the taxes to the government, not uh, following the rules and regulations, uh, you are not uh, following any packaging, label, uh, distribution uh, standards, uh, safety, food and safety standard, which causing to the political and legal risk. Another one is use of children in advertising and ad advertising to children are banned in certain countries and uh, in our India also you cannot use children uh, in advertisement. And uh, we see that the economic environment where the company can produce the product, whether that country is able to purchase the product, whether the purchasing priority of the company is more, the economic environment of the company is more, where the customers are going to buy the uh, buy your company product that also known only with the economic environment and political environment of that company of that country. So, <clears throat> so consumer plays an important role in the country's wealth. So. Indeed, consumer outlays uh, perennial makeup uh, around uh, two thirds of the overall economic activity. So, suppose uh, uh, whatever you produce in a com particular company, the company's uh, economic GDP is very less, and uh, annual income of that company is very less. So, in that case, the consumers will not buy the product. Now, what you are seeing in uh, uh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka, so uh, where the GDP has come down, so uh, the consumers will not buy the product. Uh, and uh, they are not going to produce the product also because the uh, amount is uh, the budget is a very uh, sorry uh, because they don't have sufficient amount of money to buy the product from the market so the government has to give subsidies for them to buy the product so mostly this economic environment will influence the consumers to buy the product nationally or internationally and the other one which is going to have uh, is a inflation where is the economic environment is going to increase another is technological environment where you see that uh, the product and services which are manufacturing is the latest technology we see that uh, many companies are producing the latest technologies in the country now we, because a new technology has resulted in new goods and services earlier we have only black and white tv there is no remote but after that we have a uh, uh, color tvs but no remote and uh, now we have the uh, black uh, color black and white TVs with the remote. Now what you are saying is, now we are having L LED TVs with uh, uh, with color TV with uh, LED TV and a remote. And not only that, we can have use that uh, uh, LED TV anywhere from uh, from your home. 
means uh, you can uh, use that uh, TV uh, 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 by using your uh, um, uh, smartphone also. Means the old technology is replaced by the new technology and because it, which has made uh, the marketing opportunities more. So technology in revolution is in marketing environment. Innovation is taking not just creating new product but also whole new industries, new technologies coming. Now you are saying uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now whatever you say, you say um, that what you call Emma's, um, um, what is that, uh, voice messages, uh, um, uh, the voice, if you skip that, uh, it will give the, uh, do everything for you. What is that? Can anyone say what is that one? Okay, I'll come back to you after a few minutes and come back to you. Uh, now we are saying about artificial agents where the technology is developed and which are sometimes addressing social and uh, environmental concern by cheap, non-polluting energy conversion, safe products and uh, priority among consumers by providing uh, equal access and opportunity. And you talk about uh, monitoring the technology uh, and the social culture, every company has to take about the social culture and environment of the product to be manufactured. Suppose you see that uh, 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 Dasra, Diwali, Christmas, New Year, Pongal, etc. The, the company has to follow this uh, culture and traditions because uh, every company has to make uh, the social culture and want the marketing relation between the marketing and society. So whatever they want, they have to produce. So during Diwali, crackers are produced. During Sankranthri, Pongal, uh, uh, um, we have a uh, new rice and you make a prepare sweets, etc. So these are cultural, even uh, Muslims, Ramzan, Bakri, yeah, uh, uh, all this they'll do uh, on heartfully and the business has to develop. So they have to sell the product which are needed for that festival. Christmas and we see greetings, stars uh, that will be there on the Christmas, Christmas trees. So the products are developed according to the needs and requirements and the cultural traditions to be followed by the business people every time throughout their business. And uh, So when you're talking about buyer behavior, how you will make a buyer behavior? Now when you're talking about the buyer behavior, it's a big lesson. Why you have to make a buyer behavior? So suppose sometimes uh, you go to a shop, you see all the shops and simply come out without purchasing anyone. Why that? You have money, why don't you buy it? Because you are not willing to pay for that one. <laughs> so we have the models of buyer behavior, industrial buyer behavior, consumer buyer behavior. Consumer buyer behavior is one who, which depends upon your consumer who is buying the product and industrial buyer behavior is one who is buying the product for industry and the consumer decision making process. Nowadays, uh, consumer decision uh, making is done only with uh, the children in the family. Family decisions are not over. Now the children decision because suppose you got married, you have children, if you ask your son which uh, you who buy a pro, uh, TV or a car. Uh, then your son will be saying, why did you buy this TV or car? Because his choice will be different. Because uh, behavior will differ from person to person. Behavior will be different from child to the adult, adult to the child. So when you talk about these cases, why we are bothered about uh, what is the buyer behavior? So uh, consumer buyer behavior is the process through which ultimate buyer makes the purchase decision. Which product, uh, the head of the family is the father so he will take a decision, what will be uh, purchased for a uh, uh, family? Sir, uh, for, mother, uh, for a wife, what he is to buy? For a father, what he is to buy? For a mother, what he is to buy? For a son, what he is to buy? And for him, what he is to buy himself? But that is head of the department, head of the family, he can take the decision as a consumer decision. But when, when, you, uh, when a family is involved in that one, the exchange process was also involved in acquiring, consuming, disposing of goods and services, experience and ideas. And uh, Della Bita, Bita has a giving saying it's a fiscal process, 
individually engage in then elevating, acquiring, disposing of goods and services. Ludan and Della Bitta. Means consumer totally the uh, totality of the consumer decision would uh, whether to buy or not, what to buy, why to buy, how to buy, when to buy, where to buy, and also how much, uh, how often, how long. The idea of consumption not only include purchasing and using, but also disposing of. So if I buy a TV, your son says, why did you buy the TV? Then you will be disappointed. Suppose you ask your son to buy the TV, means he will go and see the model, everything, and he will check this he used to buy. So because he is satisfied, because we are the only the one, parents, our children should be satisfied. That is the criteria of buying. So purchase in a consumer buying context, it may, it may mean a family or a group influencing where the individual buying context, industrial buying context, it means of a, a cross-functional items which can member uh, performing. So individual buyer behavior is different and initial buyer differ, uh, different. Initial buyer is for uh, purchasing the product for industry, not for him. So models of buyer behavior, we have industrial buyer behavior and consumer buyer behavior. And uh, may generate a marketing stimulus that depends upon other, st other stimulus, it is a four piece. That is a product price, price and promotion. And other stimulus is upon economic, political, culture, technology. And when you talk about the um, buyer's black box, we say buyer characteristics, we say buyer's decision making process. And the buyer response, that is a product choice, a brand choice, a dealer choice, a purchase timing, purchase amount. All these are taken because of the consumer behavior model. So when a consumer buyer, a buyer, a consumer response is there, what product he has to purchase? He will choose which product to purchase, whether I want to buy 100 liters refrigerator or 150 liters refrigerator or 225 liters refrigerator or 300 liters refrigerator or 500 liters refrigerator. Or if I want to buy a mobile phone, I will be uh, he will be thinking of whether I have to buy Apple iPhone. Again, in the Apple iPhone, whether I for uh, 3i phone or 4i phone or 5i phone or 6i phone. Which phone I have to buy? If I Samsung again say Galaxy 22 or Galaxy 22 Plus or Galaxy 23, what? Because he will be ch ch choosing, uh, choosing the brand, brand choice you say. And the dealer choice, which dealer you have to buy, whether I buy, buy it through online, or shall I go to Big C or you have to go to Small C or you have to go to Reliance Smart or, or, or I go to uh, other dealers so that I can buy. purchase. When I purchase, uh, during festival I purchase, after the festival I purchase, during discount I purchase, or during summer I purchase. Now you take about uh, ACs and refrigerators. There is a demand for AC and refrigerator because of the summer. And the purchase amount decision by, the purchase amount should be less comparing to the others. Where he will get little bit amount, then only he will be taking a decision to buy the product. Now all these are the cultural influence, etc. Group influence will be there for buying a product and consumer product. Now, when you're talking about the consumer decision process, uh, it's an integrated model of consumer decision process. You, first, you have to go for uh, what you have to do. So, when you're talking about consumer decision prod process, so which one uh, should be done? So, first, you have to go interpersonal determinants, that is cultural influence, uh, social influence, uh, family influence. And if a personal influence is there, uh, determinants are there, determine the needs and motives, what you want to buy, how, how much you want to buy, Perception, whether you want to buy or not, that you have to know from where you got the perception. Whether your buyer, brother has brought, or sister has brought, or cousin has brought, or neighbor has brought. And attitude, whether you want to buy the same product or different product. And you learn from that what you are buying the product. And we say sell concept. So based on that, you search for the information, where you get the product information. So you go to the website, you go to the journals, we go to the newspaper, magazines, etc. And you search the evaluation of the alternatives and... Uh, uh, there are a number of alternatives there in that uh, select the best alternative. So in the best alternative, uh, purchase decision and action should be taken and post purchase decision should be taken into consideration. So based on this, you have a consumer uh, complete step by step process of making purchase decision. So So when you talk about the or the implications of the uh, consumer behavior is uh, there are many studies are there defining by the four piece of the market product price and promotion so the list of questions are related to marketing strategy and marketing mix 
So that are considered uh, for finding out the strategy. One is the market segmentation to whom the product should, uh, where the product should be marketed, whether north, south, east, west, yeah, is the market segmented or not? Uh, how profitable is each segment? So which area is uh, uh, profitable for you? Whether north segment or south segment or east segment? And the character of each segment and the positioning, how you positioning the product in the minds of the consumer through giving advertisements or sales promotion or offerings, etc. Are you repositioning that one? And uh, uh, we have to develop a new product, development of a new product uh, or a change in the existing offerings or offer be called and uh, logo look like and uh, packaging and lo uh, logo. And other one is the guarantees and uh, making a promotion uh, that is marketing communication, uh, decision making, uh, what your advertising objectives and wh what should your advertisement look like, etc. that to be considered. And pricing decision should be what to be priced and uh, how much should be priced and uh, uh, price static should be used. And uh, market decisions uh, target customers like shops and uh, should be stored or designed. And uh, when you talk about this, uh, we'll uh, see that So market segment and target positioning. So market segmentation based on, I already told you, to identify the group of customers. Who are your target customers? So north, South, East, West or uh, age limit, uh, 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 what you call uh, demographic variables that you are going to uh, uh, make it for segmentation. And uh, criteria for segmentation should be homogeneous consumers or uh, in identify individual consumers or you can segment can acted upon and uh, effective demand. The segment analysis uh, uh, should be what are your marketing objectives, what is the new segment or determining the better satisfying existing ones and uh, analyze the total market data, how much your data you have related to your uh, market, develop a, um, a segment profile, which segment you want, north, south, east, west or uh, to the middle-aged people or uh, educated people, etc. You make the segment profile, then you evaluate the segmentation, which is a property for you, whether uh, if it's a teenage product is profitable for you or a uh, uh, old-age people product is uh, profitable for you or a teenage product is uh, um, uh, will be more for you. So select the target segment based on your uh, opportunity and uh, complete the data or marketing uh, behavior for the target segment and uh, not available, can we make a responsible assumptions? And uh, designing the marketing strategy for a target segment. So what type of product to be done with the So reappraisal of the segment we are talking about. Um, what are the reasons to carry out the strategy? What are any changes to be there with the uh, target audience in the future? Are they going to change in the future or not? That also you can see. And uh, mostly, uh, segmentation type we can do on demographic, that is area-wise, the region of the product, distribution, cultural difference, and uh, mobility of the consumer, and demographic, age, area, sex, income, education, qualification, and uh, uh, social status also you can do it. And the psychographic, uh, we say personal traits, personality, lifestyle, attitude, and uh, you can uh, go for a reference group or social roles. And uh, uh, general lifestyle, uh, correlation of demography and psychography variables can be taken into consideration for segmentation. So based on the product usage and a product benefit also you can segment. And decision process. So when you come to the target approaches, uh, target uh, market selection is the next logical step for the following segmentation. So market segmentation takes place behind the identified uh, organizations and uh, undifferentiated market uh, can be done. That is a company only can produce or buy product online and offline. All the consumers are, are a single marketing mix. So based on that, your undifferentiated market will uh, expand. And uh, one another undifferentiated market uh, promote uh, numerous products with the uh, different market mixes. So same product with uh, different ages. 
and uh, concentrated market only to particular uh, type of the product can be man man manufactured and uh, to be marketed only to the particular uh, product now you say i told in the one now pampers are there uh, only diapers for small people but now you see now the tech now the ch there is change in the uh, consumption even the old age people are uh, above 80 or who are uh, unconscious uh, who are bedridden also can have a diapers so this is one of the segmentation is a micro marketing where a small market can be make a, into them and uh, we talk about industry introduction marketing mix as i told you in the class we say product price place and promotion so we talk about the product that is uh, the elements of marketing mix the product is uh, one is product design product positioning product name and branding packaging and labeling breadth and width of the product line level and type of customer services product warranty and guarantee new product developed product, uh, product development process and product life cycle strategies so these are the element of a product and then price manufacturer wholesaler and retail selling prices terms and condition bidding tactics discount policies new product pricing that is skimming versus printed pricing promotion we talk about the marketing communication we say advertising sales uh, force from policies direct marketing email marketing uh, public relations price promotion for the consumers and the channel and uh, trade shows and the special events these are the promoting how you make the promotion how you inform to the customers and the last one is a place distribution we say direct versus indirect channels direct uh, from consumer uh, producer to consumer indirect from uh, 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 produ producer to the agents middleman maximally then consumer and the channel length uh, how many uh, uh, channels should be there uh, agents should be there distributor should be there uh, channel breadth exclusive selective or intensive and franchising policies policies to ensure channel coordination and control so these are related to your uh, marketing mix elements so i think uh, the last we'll see is a, a product life cycle uh, where you talk about uh, introduction growth maturity saturation and decline of the product so introduction uh, introducing the market in the market growth uh, the sales increases the growth of the product increases mature all the consumer buy the product so it will become mature and there will be no market uh, mature saturation so it is to the end stage and uh, it will become a decline that is no sales for the product in future based on the product life cycle your product pricing also changes so 100 rupees product will come at 5 rupees at the end of the death of the product so decline in the decline stage so with this uh, we will uh, stop that one and uh, uh, next class we will see you next class okay so i have told you um, um seven piece so product price place and promotion are the four piece process physical evidence and people are the another the remaining three piece but in that will come in services marketing that is a process flow of activities services script and customer involvement physical evidence is a facility design service um, uh, means etc and the people uh, recruitment training motivation team words customer education training so all these are relating to product uh, people process and uh, physical evidence of the services uh, marketing so i thank you for uh, spending one hour with me and i think the next uh, faculty will be waiting and uh, we'll see in the next class mostly on i think in saturday thank you thank you sir thank you students I think uh, next uh, class will be coming to you. Good morning, everyone. Okay, uh, in the last class, uh, we have seen uh, about the nature of management, social responsibilities and planning uh, we have seen and we want to complete the, the topic of decision making in the unit one. So just a recall of the last class. In the last class, we have seen about the nature, importance, 
steps in planning types of planning objectives of planning so these are all the things we have seen in the yesterday's class today we are going to see about decision making so decision making uh, regarding decision making uh, decision making plays a major role in all the aspects uh, in the organization and who has the power and authority to decide or make a decision means the top level and the middle level management lot not the uh, lower level management lower level management can give an option of they can provide a suggestion and they can give their ideas but they can't able to decide uh, the decision making power, power and authority will be uh, with the top management and uh, the middle management will be doing the decision making process and this decision making process influences and impacts the uh, uh, goal attainment of goal and everything in the organization's uh, structure and not only the aspect of structure everything what happens in the organization will be based on the decision making process so here comes the explanation for decision making uh, in every uh, in an organization decision or routinely taken in operations in all the aspects the decision making will be takes place regarding r and d maintenance transportation that's what i have given in the first point and uh, decision making it is a cognitive process leading to the selection of course of actions among alternatives among alternatives means if if i am going to decide something if i have more than one option or one choice or one alternative only i'll be deciding which one i i want to pick or which one i want to implement so a uh, decision making is possible only when there is more alternatives <coughs> that is more plans among which plan i'm going to i'm going to choose which plan and which will be the good for that time and if i'm going to implement a plan through that i should succeed uh, the goal of the organization so decision making is a continuous process in all the aspects and the decision making will be based on the available alternative choices and every decision making process procedure will be a final choice it can be a action or opinion decision making it is a final end point in that uh, organizational process okay and next thing is uh, characteristics of decision making so what are the characteristics uh, as i said decision making is goal oriented it is entirely related towards the attainment of goal and it involves alternatives that it in it has it will be having more choices or more number of plans among that alternatives the decision will be taken and the decision making is an analytical intellectual process analytical intellectual process means it is a systematic and um, uh, before deciding or implementing anything a proof uh, of succeeding that uh, factor or proposal of something or analysis or research will be done and then only the decision will be uh, took by the both top and middle level management and it is a continuous activity it won't get stopped at any point in all the point the decision making will takes place and it is uh, and it makes in an persuasive function persuasive means everything will be everything will be happening based on the decision making process only in the organization and decision making is situational and dynamic that is decision making is not static stat static static means it, it will not be constant decision making will be changing according to the situations and the dynamic condition which is prevailing in the organization so these are all the characteristics of uh, decision making so next is uh, decision making process so this is the decision making process before uh, deciding or making a decision this process will be implemented first organizational objectives so there will be a organizational objective based on that organizational objective only the goal attainment vision mission everything will be uh, formulated so first thing defining the objective before deciding uh, the the uh, objectives will be defined based on that uh, objectives they will establish the criteria so after establishing the criteria they will be formulating the model based on the criteria the model will be formulated and from that model they will generate alternatives that is they will create choices and they will frame different plans so uh, then after generating the alternatives all those alternatives or choices will be evaluated that is analyzed so evaluation process in all the plans or all the choices or all the alternatives will be done 
and after the evaluation is over among that alternatives which one is the best selection of best alternatives will be uh, done and that is the final decision final thing is uh, the best alternative will be implemented as a decision so this is the decision making process first they will define the objectives then establish the criteria then formulate the model from the model they will generate alternatives among the alternatives evaluation process will take place and among those um, after the completion of evaluation the best alternative will be chose and it will be implemented as a decision so this is the decision making process <clears throat> so this is what i have explained so decision methodology how a manager or top management or whomever having power and authority in an organization how they will be doing what kind of methodology they will be following for example i have took uh, managers so engineers and managers are expected to use a number of quantitative techniques to serve as a base for decision making engineers and managers will often use quantitative techniques as a basic model and they will implement quantitative technique as a tool uh, for making decisions so type of quantitative techniques will be depending on the nature of variables influencing the problem there will be dependent variable and independent variable or both will be a dependent both will be independent what kind of variables that uh, problem or that situation is got influenced based on that the quantitative technique will be <coughs> excuse me quantitative technique will be used by the uh, engineers or managers in some of the cases all the information about decision variables are known but in some informations about decision variables are also known no information about decision variables are also known. what i am coming to tell in some cases this three points what it tell means in some situation all the informations will be open to everyone in some situations it will not be open to everyone in some situations no information that we can't able to find the root cause of the problem so what it, it may happen anything based on that situation only what kind of quantitative technique to be implemented that will be decided by the uh, engineers and managers so several quantitative techniques as i have mentioned in the previous slide i have speaking about quantitative quantitative techniques what are all the quantitative techniques so variables with complete certainty variables with complete certainty mean for example i have given break even analysis scheduling uh, linear and non linear programming dynamic programming cost benefit analysis so these are all the quantitative techniques uh, they can use and uh, in case of variables with risk and partial certainty if the variables have complete certainty they can use the above said uh, techniques that is break even analysis scheduling linear programming and so on so if the variables are with, uh, with risk and partial certainty it's not with complete certainty they can go for forecasting simulation queuing theory decision trees regression aggregate planning so these things can be done and if the variables with extreme uncertainty they can't predict it is everything is uncertain means for example they can go for game theory flip of coin or astrology so these are all the quantitative uh, techniques the engineers or managers will be using to do the decision making process so finally these are the types of planning there are three types of planning uh, in in short basically there are short term and long term plan only and that's what given in your syllabus also i have just added a day to day plan for running every day we need the day to day plan also so i am mentioning it as operational planning so basically there are uh, short term long term and day to day planning long term plan will be called as strategic planning sorry a long term plan will be called as strategic planning a uh, short term plan will be called as tactical planning and day to day planning will be called as operational planning so <coughs> so what the uh, tactical planning deals with the tactical planning and strategic planning both are involved with operational planning because everything will be happening day to day so operational is uh, meant with tactical as well as strategic so tactical will be dealing with business responses and the strategic will be dealing with business recoveries 
So tactical uh, planning, uh, what it will do means immediate internal crisis or response plans for uh, for uh, for coming overcoming the immediate uh, internal crisis this tactical planning will be used and uh, that is for short term problems for recovering or for to come out of short term problems this tactical plans will be used for long term vision and mission attainment of future risks the risk plan linked to the strategy and performance management will be implemented so this is the differentiation or uh, points between strategic, tactical and operational planning. So strategic is long range, tactical is intermediate and operational is short range because it is day to day planning operational is and time frame strategic uh, is more than three years, uh, tactical is two to three years, time frame for operational is one year and uh, strategic planning responsibility, uh, strategic planning will be done by top management. A tactical planning will be done by middle level management and the operational planning will be done by lower level management and uh, the strategic planning is concerned with framing objectives policies programs and the tactical planning is concerned with procedures projects and strategies and operational planning is concerned with schedules and methods uh, which will be that is like a timetable frame for working condition and uh, the strategic planning is again deals with responsibility of overall progress of the company and uh, tactical planning is uh, in, uh, dealing with uh, integrating the work of various departments of the organization and operational is responsible for covering the day-to-day -day operation and implementing the internal goals and uh, next thing is uh, strategic planning will focus on planning and forecasting tactical planning will be focused on a coordination operational planning will be focusing on directing and controlling so this is the basic difference between strategic tactical and operational planning so this is uh, in short I have given a brief uh, thing about these types of planning strategic planning why and when to do and this will be done by entrepreneurs the strategic planning will be done by president partners or directors and it is long term and it is more comprehensive and next coming to the um, tactical planning where and how where to do and how to do and it will be done by managers coordinators that is uh, the, this is a middle level plan and it is a medium term and the link between the levels that is top management and lower level management this tactical plan will be a link and operational plan is about what 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 they are going to do and it is about whom they will whom this plan will be done by means technical operators that is executors line uh, supervisors they will do this and it is short term which is specific so <clears throat> next is hierarchy of plans uh, hierarchy of plans uh, organization grow as there is a organizational goals uh, we have three kinds of plans right strategic tactical and operational so strategic goals are meant with strategic plans and that strategic plans deals with tactical goals tactical goals will again um, be in the direction with tactical plans as well as strategic plans will also influence it tactical will be straightly coordinating with operational goals and tactical plans also dealing with operational goals and finally operational goals so this is a diagram which shows the hierarchy of plans so this is about first unit so we have completed the first unit now we are going to move on to the second unit in second unit uh, we are going to see about the organization structure and the formal and informal organization so these are the topics we are going to cover in uh, unit 2 so first thing uh, organization structure what does it mean by organization structure for every activity we need a structure without structure if we are doing anything it won't uh, give a fruitful result so that too in an organization if a person or group of person is going to start an organization they need a structure so structure is nothing but pattern so what kind of pattern even if you are writing exams we need a question pattern right so question pattern means what in what form in, for what kind of marks or what in which in what way i'm going to write that exam that is a pattern so in organization what kind of organization that is and what is the nature of the organization how the work is going to be done there and how the employees are going to work there that is the organization structure so that's the explanation I have given here. 
uh, organization structure is nothing but the pattern of jobs and group of jobs in an organization and it is an important cause of individual and group behavior if there is no pattern of jobs and uh, groups of jobs in the organization everybody will wa work on their own they won't have a common pattern so if there is a common pattern in the organization the behavior of individual and as a group of employ em and as a group employees will behave commonly and they will follow the same rules regulation policies and procedures and so on so based on that pattern for framing those rules regulations strategies policies everything this organization structure will help so the concept of organization structure a uh, concept of organization structure deals with two uh, categories structure as an influence uh, on behavior structure will be influencing the uh, as i said it will influence the individual and group behavior and structure as a recur recurring activities recurring activities means in this organization this kind of work and this kind of process should be done apart from that nothing will not be entertained in this organization so recurring activity means what kind of activities should be done in the organization the clarity should be clarity will be given through the organization structure to the employees so next uh, the four key design decisions before framing the organization structure designing is very important so uh, what are the uh, key uh, key f uh, criteria or key factors will influence the designing decisions of organization structure means first thing division of labor division of labor means work specialization work specialization means i have given a diagram here so high and low there will be all kind of works in the organization division of labor means dividing the work and all allotting or allocating the work to the employees so this process will be done by the managers so that is middle level management so they should know about each and every employee and they sh based on that employees nature and skill set the kind of work should be allotted if not the time will be wasted and the division of uh, labor that is the work whom to you whom you gave they won't if they are not having the uh, knowledge or they are not specialized in that area it is entire time waste for both the uh, that is management as well as the employees so division of labor will be influencing the uh, organization structure and departmentalization departmentalization what kind of departments is needed in that organization in default every organization will have hr department finance so these are all the two default departments it will be functioning in all the organizations but apart from that if a uh, if a organization is uh, ha, um, basically into the service industry means based on that industry the departmental departments will be created for example if an organization is dealing with marketing products so in that hr department will be there finance will be there marketing sales advertisement uh, marketing department sales department advertisement department uh, then uh, then so on will be there but there is no need of operations operational department or operational department is not because it is entirely dealing with marketing so if some manufacturing industry or manufacturing concern is there means operation department is needed purchase department is needed hr again hr and finance will be a, um, will be there and r and d research and development department will be there so departmentalization will be done based on the nature of the industry and the organization so this comes based on this only the organization structure will be framed and span of control numbers based on the number of uh, employees the span of control will be decided for example if everybody is going it is a if a project is going to be given to a team in a team there can be four members and one superior so apart from four members new member cannot be added in that in a team because uh, indi uh, individual a team leader can manage only up to four members then only you can expect the fruitful result if you are overloading number of employees in a team and a single person cannot have a control over them so uh, a minimum criteria how many uh, employees can be handled by a team leader so that what how how for that uh, team uh, team leader will be having a control over them so this this thing should be analyzed and based on that only uh, the organization structure will be framed for example in a team there can be four members 
and a project uh, more than two projects should not be allotted to a team only two projects can be allotted and a tl should be there and four members will be a team members so this is for example i'm telling so this is how they can have a span of control and uh, this factor will be uh, took as a major important thing in design structuring or designing the organization structure and authority to whom the authority and power should be given the hierarchies that will be decided and that plays a major role in organization structure and next thing we are going to see about types of organization structure there are many types of organization structure and identifying the activities of organization and grouping them properly that is called organization structure and it is also known as departmentization so there are majorly four types functional structure divisional structure hybrid structure and matrix structure so these are all the basic major four types of uh, organizational structure uh, before that we want to know about work specialization then we can move on to these structures so work specialization means it is concerned to extend uh, to which jobs are specialized that is the categorization prioritization is very much needed work specialization should be done properly and it is a proper process of dividing the work into relatively specialized jobs to achieve the advantages and specialization for example if a candidate is recruited a mba candidate is recruited or for example an mcom candidate or bcom candidate is recruited he is meant with finance department if he is if he has completed bcom and mcom he is he will know the terminologies and he will have a knowledge and idea about finance technologies and he can work in finance department rather than if you are recruiting him and putting him in an hr department or some other operational department you can't able to expect the uh, result what you are expecting so based on the specialization uh, the work uh, allocation should be done so now we are coming to the types of structure first one is uh, functional structure a functional structure it is a type of departmentization in which positions are grouped according to the main functional area based on the main functional area uh, the work uh, nature and the uh, structure will be framed and organizing by function is mostly widely used method in grouping activities and this structure we can see almost everywhere this kind of financial sorry functional structure is used in major kind of all the organizations so uh, here i have given the diagrammatic representation of functional departmentization so for example i have named as obm company so if that and it is an uh, uh, engineering uh, related company means they will be having an engineering department quality control manufacturing distribution finance public relations human uh, resources and purchasing so obm company is having based on the functions here see based on the functions they are having the department engineering department quality control they are going to check the it is a qc department and finance they are going to deal with financial related issues allocation of finance then public relation manufacturing industry based on the functional areas the departmentization and the organization structure will be framed so obm companies structure is they are having around eight departments so this is the functional organization uh, here i have given the advantages uh, it gives a uh, this kind of functional uh, structure gives a clear path clear route and it is uh, more economical and everybody will be working according to the specialization coordination will be good because they are working in their own area so they will not have a mess or compliance or problem with others where the problem arises means once somebody is entering into his work or her work there come there arises a problem so he, in this structure there it, it, it is it will not happen because everybody is going to work in their own specializations so the coordination will be good and in depth skill development will done because they are working in their own specialized area so in depth skill about skill about uh, their specialization will happen and the power and prestige will be created among the employees so these are all the advantages and uh, next is disadvantages and means boredom and monotony uh, as they are working in their specialization they are going to uh, uh, they are daily they will be doing their routine work what they done from the single day day one 
they will get bored and monotony they will feel we are doing the same work they at one point they will get fed up they will bo- they will get bored and they will not feel happy or uh, enthusiastic to work in that environment so that is a disadvantage poor decision making poor decision making means they won't have knowledge in other areas so the decision making capacity will be low uh, subunit conflicts subunit conflicts will be arising because uh, department to department problems won't be there but within the department problems within the uh, uh, particular area or particular unit problems will be more and managerial vacuum will happen managerial vacuum at some after some point it is not easy to control the uh, specialized uh, the perp- the people who are working in those specialized areas so these are all the advantages and disadvantages of fun- functional structure and now first we have seen the functional structure next we are moving on to the uh, departmentalization so as i said it i have clearly explained about what is departmentalization now we are going to see about uh, divisional structure first we have seen the functional structure now we are going to see the divisional structure divisional structure is also being said as departmentalization it divides by the according to the shared characteristics or things. so divisional structure is a type of departmentalization in which positions are grouped according to the similarity of products services and markets based on the similarity of products services and markets the structure will be framed and generally there are five forms of departmentalization first thing is function geographical product departmentalization process departmentalization and customer departmentalization uh, so first thing functional departmentalization jobs are combined according to the functions uh, the principal advantage of this, uh, functional departmentalization is by having departments of specialist management creates efficient units so this is the advantage and disadvantages uh, organizational goals may be sacrificed in favor of departmental goals so the the department uh, will be given more importance and the departmental goals will be uh, given more importance and work will be flowing towards the department attainment of departmental goals so in some cases there may be a chance of sacrificing the organizational goals itself so this is the functional departmentalization same what we have seen in the previous structure and next thing is geographic departmentalization uh, geographic departmentalization the name itself meant with geographical areas so establishing the group according to the geographical areas for example if a company is there and it is going to broaden it broaden their uh, units or branches in uh, north west south so that is uh, geographic departmentalization the logic is that all the activity is given in the based on the regions only and the advantage is larger organization can implement this uh, geographic departmentalization because physical separation of activities makes uh, centralized coordination uh, will be easy and if they are doing a centralized coordination it will be difficult so decentralization of uh, coordination is needed and it happens with the help of uh, geographic departmentalization only for example if a concern is if an mnc corporate is having a branch in india and headquarters is in us means the process procedures the relations what headquarters will be different and uh, the it will be changed according to the indian situation based on the government rules regulations procedures here so the geographical departmentalization will be helping for decentralization and to based on the situational needs uh, this depa- this departmentalization will help the uh, top management to run the organization and it provides training uh, ground for managerial persons because in all the different regions uh, a branch head or regional head will be there so it will become a training uh, ground for them to become a good managerial person so this is the uh, diagrammatic representation for uh, geographic departmentalization if there is an abc company they will be dividing the uh, departments or units as north north region west south east and central so this is the geographic departmentalization and next one product departmentalization so here 
the jobs are associated with producing and selling the products and the product line will be placed under the uh, direction of one manager there will be a one head under the one head everything will come and it is entirely dealing with uh, producing and selling and uh, product becomes the preferred basis as a firm grows by increasing the number of products and markets the main aim is to increase the number of products and expanding the market area and this departmentalization concentrate more on authority responsibility and accountability of product uh, products alone and the top management to coordinate this action this departmentalization allows the top management to coordinate with the action so this is the uh, diagrammatic representation of uh, product departmentalization if there is xyz company and uh, they will be having different kinds of products they will have different uh, departments small household appliances they will be separated and they will be categorized as a uh, separate department large household appliances and separate commercial appliances then building materials and products and lawn and garden products and automotive products based on the products the departments will be separated so this is product departmentalization next one is uh, process departmentalization so the process departmentalization uh, based on the process the departments will be uh, categorized here the process requires uh, different skills such as it should be homogeneous and i'm going to categorize or department i'm going to start a departmentalization in process based then the process should be homogeneous and it should not be heterogeneous homogeneous means similar same if there is a difference uh, in the process this departmentalization cannot be implemented for example i have here the applicant may need to go through several departments namely validation licensing uh, treasury before receiving the driver driver's license so this is the process so for if i am going to get a license uh, what are the process i want to go with validation licensing treasury so these are the three process i am going to uh, a, a person is going to uh, cross for getting the license so then how the organization will be dividing the uh, departments means validation department licensing department and treasury department based on the process the departments will be structured so here is an example for process departmentalization based on the process the departments will be uh, categorized uh, xyz companies there a sawing department manager planning and milling assembling department finishing department packaging and labeling inspection and shopping department so this is how based on the process the departments will be uh, categorized so next is customer organization uh based on the customer uh, customer needs the departmentalization will be done the customer is a basic uh, uh asset for every organization so to satisfy that customers this kind of departmentalization will be done organization with customer based uh, departments are better able to satisfy their needs um uh, example educational institution offers regular and external courses it is uh, to satisfy the their customers for example uh, obm companies their retail stores mail order online sales institutional sales government contracts so who are all the customers retailers will be a customers through mail they will receive orders and through online they can they will do the sale they will be selling to the institutions and to the government so based on that the department that is retail department mail order department online sales department institutional sales and government contracts so this is how the customer uh, departmentalization customer based uh, organizations will be following this uh, customer departmentalization structure so this has uh, major advantages uh, because each unit or division can respond quickly and react quickly to the customers so that customer will get satisfied and more number of customers will be retained and this helps to achieve the goals of that division easily and it also helps to focus on serving their customers in good manner 
and uh, this structure helps the top level management to fix responsibilities and accountability of performance to that particular region and it also provides a good training uh, for managers to enhance their uh, managerial skills so these are all the advantages and disadvantages duplication of resources and activities is there is a chance and individuals in divisional structure tend to concentrate on divisional goals only and not on organizational goals they will be more concentrated towards attaining their divisional target not on the organizational target or goals so this is the disadvantage and next one is hybrid structure uh, the, it adopts both functional and divisional structure we have seen various kinds of structures among that combination of functional and divisional structure is the hybrid structure and many large organization adopt this uh, structure because it derives the economies of scale and greater competence of managers and efficiency in resource allocation of uh, functioning in the organization and it mainly focuses on product service and uh, markets so this is the uh, hybrid structure so 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 and so company is there so, and there is a hrd department human resource development department and uh, from the top management they are going to divide it into two divisions they are, they are not going to divide it into two departmentalization they are going to first they are going to, going to divide the structure into two divisions among the uh, first division they are going to dip, um, start a department among division 1 they are going to have operations department accounts department and marketing department in division 2 they are going to have separate operations department accounts department and marketing department so this is structure Excuse me. So, what is the advantages? Increased efficiency. As they have split up the divisions, efficiency will be more, and it creates unity among the staff members. Divisional uh, employees will be much more united. Flexibility is possible. Decentralization of decision making will be done because there are two divisions. So, based on the divisional, based on the divisions' authority and power, divisional head will take their de um, decision. and optimum use of resources resources will be allotted properly and allocation of resources will be happening in a proper way and disadvantage is large staffs in corporate level functional department more number of employees uh, will be uh, employed in the organization because they are going to divide into two divisions and uh, for each division they are going they want to employ in the employees point of view uh, the job opportunities will be created but from the management point of view they want to spend more uh, for the employees coordination is very slow this so this is the disadvantages and next one is uh, matrix so uh, this aims to maximize the uh, maximize the strength and minimize the weakness of functional and product base so uh, the main aim of matrix uh, structure is to maximize the strength and minimize the weakness it also facilitates the utilization of highly spe uh, specialized elements and this matrix structure has two chain of commands through vertical and through horizontal both will be having in matrix in the previous thing we will be having uh, uh, sorry vertical uh, commands only but in matrix structure vertical commands will also be there and horizontal commands will also be there a matrix structure is often seen in construction mark construction marketing and consultancy firms where professional experts work together on projects so majorly uh, in construction companies marketing companies and consultancy firms use this kind of matrix structure so this is the diagramic uh, diagrammatic representation of uh, matrix model so projects products and uh, different uh, functions manufacturing marketing engineering and finance is there based on project or product a b c d e and like like that the categorization will be done and based on that different matrix that is if a project a is there means that project a that employee should be work towards all the other functions manufacturing they want to look over matrix engineering and finance so this is the uh, model of matrix structure advantages uh, efficient use of resources possible flexibility in, in condition will be happening then technical excellence will take place uh, freeing the top management for uh, long term planning because everything will be uh, happened uh, in the middle level management so top management can concentrate on long range planning 
it improves more motivation and commitment among the employees towards the attainment of goal and providing opportunities for personal development also this kind of matrix department will provide an opportunity for the development of employees personally also and disadvantages administration cost will be higher uh, dual authority of command leads to the problem sometimes in sometimes dual authority will leads to because uh, vertical from in vertical uh, order will vertical command will also be there and horizontal command will also be there sometimes it may create a clash and in this form individuals are too engrossed with maintaining good relations with their peers peers means uh, with the colleagues of the problems will be arise because they will be getting the command from vertical as well as in horizontal so they neglect uh, to do some of the goals or goals of the uh, organization or the clients and uh, this matrix organization encourages group decision making sometimes even minor decisions are made in groups which bring down the productivity level so this is the disadvantages so we have spoke about organizations next we are moving on to the organizational design uh, it is nothing but the process of developing the organization structure so for that what are the things needed span of control or span of management so it refers to the number of subordinates a superior can supervise efficiently and effectively this is what i have explained in previous uh, slide itself i mean in the four, in the last but the fifth or fourth slide it means in a team there will be a team leader and how many employees can be managed by a team leader so that only they can expect a fruitful result that is span of control and number of individuals who report to the specific manager will be narrow span or wider span that is narrow down or wider in both or any one of the cases uh, the control will be there uh, for example i have given here if a manager directly controls 10 employees in the organization then it is his span of control he is capable of controlling 10 employees with the expansion of the business the span of supervisors increases because the number of employees increases there are two kinds of organizational structure including flat or tall organization structure in both the structures there will be different span of control a company uh, which wants low cost the span of control of supervisors increases because the company will have to pay the benefits to the less number of supervisors for example based on the nature and uh, kind of uh, top management only the span of control will be decided if the top management want to control and they want to provide a low cost then a single uh, in supervisor will be allotted with more number of subordinates if the management is ready to spend on uh, the supervisors then the supervisors will be allotted with minimal uh, subordinates and they will be expecting a good results so determinants of uh, span of control is competence of superior uh, competence of subordinates nature of work means of communication geographical location leadership style these are all the things it will be influencing the span of control and i have mentioned as tall structure tall structure is nothing but hierarchy levels uh first disadvantage is it is very expensive and second uh, communication gets uh, unduly complicated because of omission of uh, misre- misrepresentation of messages and this third one is uh, numerous departments and levels make planning and controlling gets complicated a uh, large complex organization offer require taller hierarchies very huge organization can go with tall structure and uh, the managers from many ranks and each has a small area of control only so this is uh, this is the diagrammatic representation of uh, tall structure president and there will they under that uh, there comes a vice president finance vice president hacha under that accountancy and treasury here the operations and recruitment staff development under that vice president marketing vice president procurement vice president manager everything under that only the every customer service domestic sales uh, international sales under procurement purchasing and receiving inspection manufacturing fabrication assembling testing production engineering so this kind of this is the tall structure this is how a large organization can design their organization next is flat flat structure has a wide span of control there a uh, tall structure has a narrow span of control here it has a wide span of control and fewer hierarchy levels uh, structures <coughs> the structure tasks are highly interrelated it focuses on 
uh, empowering the employees rather than adhering the chain of command. Instead of concentrating more uh, commands, this uh, structure aims to empower the employees and by encouraging the uh, autonomy and self-direction, this structure attempt to tap the employee's talent and solve the problem by collaboration. So this is the flat structure and uh, this is the diagrammatic representation of flat structure. That is CEO is there and VP finance, everything will be in a flat way. So this is about organization design. In second unit, we have covered organization structure, types of organization structure, organizational design we have completed. And next we are moving on to the delegation of authority. Uh, delegation authority means managers decide how much of authority should be delegated to each job and to each job holder. Uh, if uh, authority is going to be given to some person, uh, the, 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 at the point of authority, how much they can be given. For example, if there is a cashier of, or if there, is a, of, of, if there is a college or a school, a principal will be working there and he want to deal with financial needs. So the top management or the chairman will be giving a power to sign a uh, financial requirement of 1 lakh that principal will be having the authority and power to sign up to 1 lakh yeah, more than 1 lakh the sign should be done by the chairman so this is the delegation of authority up to which point the authority and power should be given to the um, workers or employees delegation of authority is a process of distributing authority downward in an organization so that is delegation and next thing is centralization when the authority to make all decisions lies in a single person is called centralization. Centralization means the decision making power will be with the top management or at a single point that is centralization. Single person will be fully authorized and that is centralization. In this case subordinates have no choice in decision making. They want to do what the uh, top management or instruction has been given by the top management that is centralization. Uh, factors affecting centralization, so these are all the factors, leadership, integration equipment requirement, uni uniform action, emergency, monetary, uh, sorry, monetary and virtu uh, vital decisions, peripheral factors, inefficiency of managerial powers. So these are all the factors affecting the centralization. There are advantages. If the power and authority is vested with single person, fastly decision can be done, successful control will be there. Safeguarding the secrets, secrets won't be uh, left out to any others, stability of policy will be there, personal leadership will be maintained and market can be gained. Then the major limitations are, depotism will happen, lack of specialization will be there, load on top executive, if only one person is going to be overloaded, inappropriate and undeveloped decisions because all the time the decision took by him will not be right, his decision may be in a narrow way, he, that kind of, that top management person who won't, can't able to think wider, he won't have more choices. So that is a limitation. Volatility will be taking place. Ignorance of human factor will, will also be there. Next is decentralization. Decentralization refers to assigning the authority to employees at different levels in the organization in the context of duties assigned to them. Uh, that is, the powers will be divided for example, there will be a general manager. Under the general manager, there will be many managers, finance, financial manager, purchasing manager, marketing manager, operational manager. So the general manager is going to be ahead and the power has been uh, uh, divided and it has been given to financial manager, purchase manager and the role and what kind of authority and power. Uh, the, the decision making power authority will be decentralized and it will be having a, among more than one person. So these are, these are all the factors. Load of top executives and requirement of diversification, hold on the market, growth of managers, motivational fact, motivational development will be there. Advantages, reduces loads on top executives. Uh, development of entrepre entrepre enterprise and dependability will take place, increased motivation because more number of persons is going to get the power and authority they want to hold the uh, authority so they will work towards the attainment of goals simplifies division of work leadership lead, more number of leaders will be growing in the organization and the efficiency of control and supervision will be good and uh, not dependent on few persons in centralization 
the dependency will be on few persons if that single person is going to lead the organization the entire thing will get collapsed if in decentralization if one person moves others or other persons will know the process if the marketing manager is going out of the organization the general manager and the other manager will have some idea about that process it helps the organization to carry over the process decentralization coordination is difficult waste of staffs more number of staffs will be there inefficient staffs will also be there and damaging and damaging in emergency can be takes place uh, more number of administrative costs will happen and the internal constraint like government control government control it will be an internal constraint next thing is contemporary organizational design contemporary organizational design means it is a traditional design um that is that what are the types means team structure market project structure or boundaryless structure team structure means based on the the team structure is one of the entire uh, in which uh, in which an entire organization is made up of work uh, working as a team the individual decisions are not given more importance the team decisions will be given more importance and in struct in this structure employee empowerment will be very crucial and no managerial lines will be there line of authority from top takes place in this employee teams are free to design the work in their best way and teams are held responsible for all the work activities and the performance of result for also they are only responsible for example in a marketing field sales force is, uh, is used this team based structure also forces uh use this team uh, this uh, team structure is very much uh, capable for running a marketing based company and team based structure usually practice the unwrapped products like furniture electrical equipments and cosmetics so this kind of uh, organizations follows this team structure it has uh, advantages easy integration will be taking place better management uh, and more control will be there greater productivity will be there and uh, disadvantages of team structure means uh, significant overheads of course hiring a full team leads to heavy cost uh, then arising conflict as there is more number of team members conflicts will be heavy so this is the disadvantage next virtual organizations uh, it uh, can be a thought of way in which organization uses information and communication to technologies to replace the argument that this virtual organization has a major role during the covid uh, that too in the period of covid and after covid virtual organizations are very much uh, uh, grown more and plays a major role in the industry uh, primarily interact with electronic and technological means and assembling and disassembling according to the needs based on the only the virtual organizations will be framed and next is uh, boundaryless organizations uh, boundaryless organizations is nothing but there is no boundary there is no limit there is no horizontal or vertical or external boundaries a predefined structure it behaves more like an organism which is better for all the employees and closer partnership of the stakeholders the hierarchy and chain of command will be very low and uh, rigid uh, rigidly structural departments are eliminated um, it, the high, it is highly flexible and responsive and it draws a platform for the talent or uh, talented employees and uh, it is implemented to reduce the barriers between the people and constituencies so this is boundaryless organization so in the unit 2 till we have covered what means uh, we have seen organization structure types of organization structure organizational design decentralization span of control centralization then we have seen about contemporary uh, organizational design so these are all the things uh, today we have seen uh, in the next class we have see about we can see about formal and informal organization once this formal and informal organization is done second unit will be completed till this if you have any doubts you can ask do you have any doubts any doubts
okay somebody has responded in message no thank you thank you for your response we can see in the next class thank you
Hello, good morning. Very good morning, everyone. See, yes, uh, this is uh, Banamati going to handle you the subject business, environment, and law. So, this is uh, the first class. Let me straight away get into the topic and I will start with the first unit. Is it okay? Am I audible? Okay, let me share the PPT for you. Yes, as far as the subject is concerned, business environment and law, we have uh, uh, five units. I will say. Uh, the first unit uh, by this hour only you have five hours so we have five units so each and every hour will be completing uh, one unit so today we shall start with the uh, the unit one called business and its uh, environment so totally five units in the first unit we are going to see about the business the general concept of business and the environment what are the factors which is affecting or uh, what are the uh, external factors which is affecting the business so the general concept is dealt with in uh, the first unit second unit is uh, talks about the infrastructural environment like uh, the natural and the other resources and uh, the trend in the industry which is uh, affecting the business the industry and the management so that uh, that is dealt in the second unit and the third unit is very very important it talks about since the syllabus or the subject name is business environment and law the first two units uh, talks about the business environment and third fourth and fifth unit talks about the law there are n number of uh, laws that is act uh, in this subject, only three act or three laws. About three laws we are going to see. The third unit we are going to see about the law of contract, and in the fourth unit we are going to see about the company law, and finally in the fifth unit uh, we'll be seeing about the factories act or factory law. So three, four, and five it talks about the law, and first few unit talks about the uh, business environment. Now we are in the first unit. Yes, this is uh, the unit, uh, the syllabus, which is given in your book. So it is it is about the environment, the factors which is affecting the environment. So all these are given. And uh, as per the syllabus, I have uh, pointed out what are the things we are going to see in this unit, the content. So first, uh, uh, about the business and its environment. Second CG, CG means it is the that is about uh, the social responsibility, and uh, the other one is uh, a business uh, environment. And the third one we are going to see about the economic system and next economic transition in India. And next we are going to see about the natural resources and economic development now the first one about business environment and law Am I 
Let me continue the class because uh, if you didn't uh, hear me, like uh, just say me like uh, as a note. Because there is a network issue here, so I'm checking whether you are hearing or not. So let me continue. If you're not hearing, please tell me. Now we'll start with the first concept called the uh, business environment and law. What is uh, the business and what is the uh, environment? Uh, business, as you know, it uh, is uh, uh, the deep. We are transacting from one to another or one person to another. It refers to environment refers uh, to the factors external or the internal factors which influence the uh, business. The business is one, one side and the environment is one side. Business environment means what are the factors from the outside which is affecting the uh, business. That is called business environment. There are many factors as I even here in this uh, uh, chart. You have two different factors. One is internal factor and the external factor. Internal factor is a micro factor that is internally your business is being affected. Either it may be because of a financial issue or it may be because of any other uh, operational uh, work or anything. All comes under the internal issue. What would be the external factor or macro factor? It might be the political factor, legal factor, or demographic factors, and many more are there. So these two factors which will be affecting your business, and that is called business environment. Now, what are the different types of environment? So the environment is there, that is the external factor which is being affected. So what are the factors? which is affecting your business the first one is uh, the demographic uh, factor demographic factor means it is uh, it talks about the size and behavior of the population in the country so your business will be affected uh, because of the uh, demographic environment that depends upon the size or the behavior of the population so if the population group or if a group of people is behaving uh, indifferently or if the size of the population either it is small medium or large and accordingly you have to do the uh, business see if you are a car manufacturing company uh, here in uh, india we have uh, the driving uh, style in one side and in the other countries in abroad we have uh, the driving on the other side so there is a change one will be having on the right side one will be, be having on the uh, left side and we follow to walk on the left side whereas in the other countries they follow to walk or drive on the uh, the right side so there is a difference so you have to see the demographic group and how uh, the behavior the size so their population everything should be noted and accordingly you have to do your business this is one example other one is the economic environment economic means it talks about the amount or it talks about the money or um, monetarily it will speak economic environment so here it is saying that it is a total of all economic factors like the economic structure planning and government regulation the economic factors means everything is included the inflation the government regulation the planning commission or any other economic uh, trend or economic uh, crisis or whatsoever uh, uh, that is happening in the economy in the country which will be affected your uh, business if india uh, uh, if you are a businessman you are trading or if you are exporting certain goods to other country and if suddenly india imposed like a restriction like uh, india should not uh, export or import certain items for three to four months then what will you do obviously you have to obey so that is the factor which is affecting your or uh, the business because of the rule which is uh, imposed by the government so all these comes under the economic uh, environment then the next one is uh, the legal environment legal means it talks about the rules and regulations so if government is imposing a rule 
or if any uh, ruling party is imposing a condition like this to be done or this should not be done then obviously the businessman wherever in the country has to obey has to follow those restriction either it may be related to tax or custom duty or any such things uh, that that need to be uh, followed if not followed then obviously your business will be affected then the next one is the political environment is something related to the legal but legally it talks about rules and regulation political that talks about the uh, the party who is ruling over uh, the country uh, will do certain type of uh, rules and regulation they impose certain rules regulation certain strategy they will follow and accordingly we will uh, impose the rules and regulation and we follow the business this is happening after 5 years if uh, the party changes the ruling party changes if some other person is coming and if they are imposing any other conditions which is unrelated to the present condition then uh, the business is being will be affected because the political party may change from time to time and their rules will also change from time to time so it is uh, the burden for the business has to obey all these things so simply to say there should be a stability in the political uh, condition of political rules and regulations so if that is stable there won't be problem for the business if that is not stable then we have to change or accustom with the trend which is being here in the country so that is one about uh, the political environment and the next one is the, the technological environment this you know like uh, adapting to the uh, the changes which is happening in the uh, technological wise if a business is there and they still they are using uh, only the calculator or only system based sorry the ordinary um, hand work we are not at all using the calculator or the system based uh, billing something nothing is uh, done then obviously your business won't develop and you won't get reputation right so depending upon uh, now it has come many things has come even the barcode has come and uh, gpay has come in each and every shop even the petty shop is having the uh, the gpay system scanner system so people are making use of it so they are not carrying the money and uh, it's more comfortable for the people to make use of it if your business is not uh, developing to this technological wise then your business will be will move out move out uh, of the industry So to be in the industry and to be in the survival process, then you have to adhere all the things which uh, the environment is being affected. So that is being affected. You have to overcome. You have to tackle and do your business. So these are the various environment, as I said, uh, which will be affecting your business. Though it is affecting your business, the business should run, and we have to go further. and the next topic is about the corporate uh, governance so what is corporate governance corporate governance we can say uh, simply you can say it is a rules and regulation but uh, say as a conceptual basis it is a system of rules or the process by which the firm is directed and controlled so you are doing the business how your business is being controlled how your business is being uh, run or how you are following so that is the concept for corporate governance how the corporate how the company how the business is being governed being regulated so that is the term corporate governance how the business is being directed in the business now so you can say it is rules and regulation the terminology differs in some regulation we may follow we may not follow right but how the path is created how the firm is being directed to do the business right? so the word direction or direction we use here to say about corporate governance so the structure and the process the direction and control of company and the board of directors are responsible for the governance of the companies who is being uh, directed so the business is being directed by the concept of corporate governance and who is directing who is taking the right path 
that is called the management or the directors or the ceo who are maybe the top level management or direct the company or direct and control the company for its survival right so that is called corporate governance then we we'll see about the uh, social responsibility we we saw about the corporate governance we we used to now we'll see about the uh, the social responsibility or you may call this as a corporate social responsibility yes or corporate social responsibility how the corporate or how the company or the business should be responsible to the society or socially how they become are responsible and why they should do all these things so first uh, uh, we'll see what is social responsibility so it is an obligation or it is a duty uh, that should be done by the business to improve uh, the welfare of the society so if a business is being run they have to concentrate on the society also like how to improve or how to develop the society so if you are uh, the business man or if you are uh, having a factory which is polluting the entire the planet either by airways or by waterways or whatever if your factory is being uh, polluting for time on a business then how you become responsible for the society or for that area like to balance it so if you are polluting so on the other side you have to give the medical care for that area or you can uh, give the educational facility to that uh, the children in the village or wherever so these are the things which should be done may call this the responsibility of the corporate arguments for social responsibility now why the social responsibility is needed what are the arguments which is favoring for for means it is favoring the social responsibility next we will see the arguments which is uh, against the uh, social uh, responsibility so if we see about the social responsibility for the plus and minus is there so why we should do or why we should follow the uh, social responsibility and why we should not follow the social responsibility the first one is existence and growth in order to have the business to be in existent and for its development in the future we need to have this uh, social responsibility if the business is not following <coughs> social responsibility then um, you will become outdated and no uh, the businessman or no uh, the people um, will get into your product or the service which you are providing so in order to have the existence and growth you need to be socially responsible how you become socially responsible you have to do something to the uh, society next long term interest uh, of the firm so in order to have the interest in order to have a very good name a reputation and better um, name in the minds of the people then you have to follow the strategy of uh, the social responsibility like if you are taking or adapting a village and uh, giving the medical facility or the, giving the educational facility to the children or for the senior citizen if you are providing for the in a concession then that is called the social responsibility activity which is uh, taken by the business if some if this type of activity is being done then obviously we have we will get the better growth better development better name in the minds of the people automatically a business will be in existence and have a very good growth then the third one is maintenance of law so law means like um, whatever the law or the rules and regulations being imposed by the uh, government the business concern has to maintain and continue the law and accordingly they have to do the business if that if that is done then obviously you will have a the very good reputation then the next one is avoidance of a, a government uh, regulation 
see if uh, government is giving certain rules and regulation uh, that is one side and uh, if you are in a position of not following your government regulation what the government will do they will impose any penalty or they will force to shut down your business all these will happen now how to avoid this government regulation like not in a negative sense i'm saying how to avoid means if you are not following such regulations uh, rather you are doing uh, on the other side you are doing any other concession any other benefit to the uh, the villagers or for the localities where you are having the industry uh, then it benefits the society so thereby you can say the government like we are doing these and these activities for the uh, the villagers for the students or for the senior citizen so thereby we are uh, avoiding or we are violating certain regulation and instead of that rule, we are following these types of activities if you say that the government may uh, say okay and they will take into consideration and so such a way you can avoid certain uh, regulation if you follow certain social responsible activity then finally the resources the social responsibility always favor the resources you have you can have a number of uh, uh, resources you can make use of human resources and other resources for your a business if you favor for the social responsible activity so all these are the social responsible concept which which is uh, the favoring concept then we'll see the argument against social responsibility violation of uh, argument which is against the social responsibility now uh, what are the things which is violating which is uh, not following the social responsible activity then what happened violation of profit uh, a maximization now if you are not following the social responsible activity then what you will do social responsible activity means you are doing something to the, to the society obviously you have to spend a lot for it right uh, if you are not doing that social responsible activity then obviously what your mindset you are not wanted to make uh, the expenses or you are not want to do something for the society because it, you are thinking that it is an unnecessary expenses so what you are doing you are not doing the social responsible activities and thereby you are violating the social responsible activity and you are only concentrated on profit 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 i want profit that's it i don't think about the, the social activity so that that is the one one thing which is against social responsibility and burden on the consumer now you are not doing nothing you are doing nothing to the society you are doing nothing for the society then obviously who will bear all the pain or all the uh, the burden obviously the consumer you are producing certain goods sir. okay but you are not the concentrating on the social activity but you want only the profit then uh, the cost the expenses whatever the business is incurring will be imposed or will be given on the head of the consumer okay so they have to be a and the third one is lack of social skill so to have a social responsible activity we may not be uh, the businessman may not be uh, well versed in doing the social services or social benefit to the society so i am the businessman i am doing the business so i want to uh, do something to the society but i don't have the skill now what i will do since i am not having uh, there is a lack of social skill i have to hire a person was well versed in this field i have to make use of them and i have to do something for the society for, for the social responsible activity if i don't find such person i won't do uh, the social responsible activity so i will sim simply say i don't find the person so i am not to, uh, doing for the society so because of lack of for social skill you may not go for social responsible activity and because of lack of public support so there is a name that will be a name for each and every company for my company there is no public support then what's the use for doing the social activity so i'll think in such a way like why should i do because i don't have very good name then why should i do and whatever i do the people won't recognize me then why should i do 
So if you think in such a way that you know, the social responsible activities may not happen and you may not go further. So nowadays, each and every business is uh, concentrating on doing something to the society and thereby they are improving their reputation and gaining a recognition in the minds of the uh, people. This is about the, uh, the social uh, responsibility. As I said, um, social responsibility means the corporate or the businessmen have to do certain <laughs> beneficial activity to the society, to the community. Okay, that is the concept called social responsibility. Now, how the social responsibility is being uh, implemented, how it is being uh, done towards various stakeholders. There are n number of people, right? In the society means it includes every, everybody. It, it might be a creditor or the society or the employees or the government. Many people, many stakeholders are there. Now, how they will get benefited because of your business, because of your social responsible activity. If I'm doing such a certain thing, who will get benefited? Now, uh, now we'll see that in these uh, uh, different boxes. Social responsibility towards stakeholders, towards different people. Now, how the shareholders will get benefited? Now, you are the business, you are the company. Now, a person or certain number of person has uh, purchased your company shares. They become the shareholder, right? How they will get benefited? You have to assure them about uh, their uh, security and you have to uh, be proper in payment and providing correct information of the uh, company so you, you should be correct in uh, all the sense now the next one to the suppliers or the creditors you have to maintain a good relationship with them. To the suppliers or the creditors, you have to maintain a good relationship and you have to make prompt uh, payment. If some, if these things are done, then we are going in the right way or you are benefiting the entire society in different manner. So to the creditor, you have to be in good relationship. You have to pay the amount correctly and your financial condition should be strong enough to pay the debt. And for the society, you have to dispose the waste uh, in an effective manner thereby you should not harm the society and you have to create a certain employment opportunity so that uh, people will get benefited and you have to protect the natural environment thereby you should not uh, pollute the um, the natural resources in such a way you have to do your business on the other side on the employee side what you have to do you have to give fair uh, wages, bonus, incentives to the employees so they get benefited. There should be a better, good relationship between you and the employees. And you have to give a, a good working condition with the proper uh, first aid and all those uh, the conditions which is uh, stated in the Factories Act. So that you have to do and for the government obviously you have to follow the rules regulation the law which is being imposed and the tax which they are saying everything should be uh, followed by you okay so this is about the social responsibility understand what the concept of social responsibility argument is uh, uh, supporting uh, social responsibility argument uh, against the social responsibility and to whom we are responsible that is these uh, fighting okay now what is uh, business ethics ethics you know the term ethics means uh, so it, it talks about uh, the discipline or which deals with the good and bad things uh, uh, with the moral duty and uh, obligation which you need to uh, follow it is a moral principle that governs the business activities so it is a moral uh, concept like how we have to follow or how we have to run the uh, the business so why why we should have the business ethics so we need to create certain image in the minds of the general public and in order to take a better decision and in order to protect uh, the society we should be we should be ethical 
or we should follow certain business ethics right now what are the various approaches in uh, business ethics there are three approaches moral management a moral management and immoral management this is very easy like uh, if i talk about the moral management it aims to maximize the profit with some ethical values but the using some ethical condition you following some ethical values you are concentrating on doing the business and thereby you are getting a profit or you are being benefited so with some ethical values go to the immoral the third one immoral means unethical practices you are not uh, following certain moral values you are just opposite of the moral management right you are not following ethical values you are not uh, going to concern about the people or whatever you are only focusing on uh, the profit or you may you may be selfish or you don't care about uh, the society so that is uh, immoral management moral management immoral management is just the opposite now coming to the second one the middle concept that is a moral management which doesn't come under either moral or the immoral management it doesn't come under these two categories it is of a, a separate category that is called uh, a moral uh, management now we'll see the next concept called uh, economic uh, system what is economic system how the economic is being categorized or it is the collection of everything economic system means it is a collection of your production your resources your distribution consumption everything which is happening in the economy it is the sum of all which i said now that is the sum of all your production your resource allocation distribution and the consumption of goods and services that's happening in the society or in the economy put together everything we call that as the economic system you have different types of economic system the three things which are there capitalist socialist and mixed economy now what is capitalist capital means as that is given in the box so it is the free enterprises it is uh, called as the market economic system where capital means there is no government interference the business you can uh, open of your wish and you can close whenever you want there is no government regulation the capitalist system and the other one is socialist means it, it may be called as the planned economy or the command plan or command who is commanding the government is commanding the opposite of capitalist is the socialist there the government is not interfering here the second one everything is being commanded or planned and executed by the government the government interference will be there 100% okay there, there won't be any flexibility if government is imposing then you need to fall so capitalist and socialist is just the opposite okay so there is no government interference in the first one second one is 100% government interference this is the two concept now the third one mixed economy is a combination of the capitalist and socialist there will be government interference in some aspect and there will be government interference in certain aspect so that is called as the uh, mixed economy so it is a mix of these two capitalists and socialists now our country india is following the mixed economy not the capitalist or not the socialist we are the uh, the mixed economic uh, system we follow the mixed economic system and in your book uh, they have given certain uh, characteristics of um, the mixed economy you can just uh, see to it uh, because it's a general concept the characteristics so mixed economic uh, means i just uh, say at a glance 
Uh, mixer economic means there will be uh, both the public and the private will be uh, dealt there. And it concentrates on uh, the social uh, uh, order or the social justice and about the ownership. So whatever that is done, everything will come under the government control, though we have certain freedom and directing the investment in social responsible project. What the government will do, they will initiate the business to do the business in uh, social activities or concentrating on the society and whatsoever that is done uh, the power will be will be in the hands of the uh, government so this is a basic characteristics it's uh, shared in your book you can just uh, uh, see to it then the next concept is called as economic uh, transition in uh, india economic transition transition means transfer at the moment now it is a changing from planned to uh, free market economy. That is the transition from planned, from the command, the socialist economic to uh, the mixer economy or the free economy. If you are moving, then that is called the economic transition. How the economy is being transitioned. The best example is privatization. See here in recent times, everything has become private, right? So that is called the transition. So the government, which is uh, taking the control of certain activities, uh, now the government is giving that activity, or giving that task to the private to handle. So this is called the transition, right? So that is where the government, uh, the planned economy is shifted to the, uh, the free economy. Privatization is the one best example for uh, understanding this concept called economic transition. There are different ways of privatization which I have listed here deventure, uh, denationalization, franchising, contracting, leasing. Everything is there in your book. You can just see to it like what what the concept is. I've just given what the meaning is. First one is, is about the disposal of unit uh, through sales. You are selling the government is selling the business unit to the private. Denationalization means transferring the asset. First one is selling. Second one is transferring the asset to the private. Franchising means giving the right of the government. The government rights and the name is being used by the private and they do the business. Contracting means you are taking certain government uh, things as a contract and doing the business. And leasing means the government's property is being leased out and you are using those property for the business purpose. So these are different ways of uh, privatization which is given in your book. Uh, now we'll go to the concept called uh, uh, globalization. Mm. This is, I think, uh, the last uh, topic where we are in. Let's see to it. Yes, I think the last economic transition in India is over. We finished everything, right? Uh, we are in the last topic, natural resources and economic development. We finished economic transition also. Sorry. I think we are in economic transition topic only. And in that economic transition only, uh, we are seeing about uh, the privatization and globalization. So transition means it's a movement from one uh, system to the another system, either from uh, capitalist to socialist or socialist to mix their economy. That is called transition. The transition can be done in two ways. One is privatization and the other one is globalization. We saw about private privatization in the previous slide. Now we'll see about the globalization. The last topic is about the natural resources. That is so simple, like you can revise and uh, Go, go through by your own. Now we'll see about the globalization. Globalization means what? Like the business which is being transferred from planned to the mixed economy. Globalization means your business is being done or operated internationally from one country to another country or many countries. So that is a uh, globalization. You have different levels of uh, globalization. 
different level that may be calcified in two uh, into two one is uh, micro level and other one is uh, macro level in micro level we'll see about the globalization at a particular uh, company globalization at particular industry okay that is at a micro level macro level means if globalization is done across the country across the country or across different uh, uh, radius country then that is called globalization at the macro level now what would be the reason for uh, globalization why a business is being globalized they are doing the business but you wanted to do the, your business abroad you want to trade abroad you, have to, you wanted to have a transaction with other countries now why what is the use of it because it is quite expensive right so expensive then why are making use of it because of certain reasons so i am the businessman i am a company i want to do certain business abroad I have wanted to have a transaction with other country then why so because of certain reason i seek better raw material so in india i am the businessman and the company i don't find the proper raw material for my uh, production process for my company so if i find that certain raw material is found in the other country then i may globalize my business i may have a business uh, in the place where i find the raw material either in the other country so if i find the raw material is here then i'll start up a business here since i am getting the raw material in an easy way that is a one one point where i go for globalization what's the other point attracted by their lifestyle so i don't find something here in india where the people uh, behavior and all these things so that benefits my business so whatever idea i am having in my mind for the business that have a better recognition in the other country then obviously i may move abroad right try to sit here and do my business this is a simple concept like uh, in particular area if you are not finding job then you are moving out to the other state and you are doing the business right similarly if i don't find a certain market for my product then obviously i move abroad and do my business so this is the second one of uh, globalization third one attracted by subsidies subsidies the government is giving certain subsidies if you do these type of business if you provide these type of services to the this, uh, people then the government is uh, giving certain subsidies if something is being provided by the other countries like for subsidies then automatically people will move abroad and make use of it All right that is other point and the next one is attracted by the new market See here, you have done the business for many years, twenty to twenty-five years, but you wanted to have a new market in another country. Obviously, you will move, right? That is one reason. The last one is if the market is saturated, company go for new opportunity. Exactly. Like here, you have done your business for a long period, and now you wanted to have a new market. You wanted to have your business become saturated. Saturated means the the last level. You have crossed the last level, and uh, after that, you may we may not get the uh, the profit. You 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 may incur only the decline. So because of that reason, you may start up a new business in the abroad. So these are the way that the business may go globally. Next one, different stages of how the globalization is being. Uh, implemented first you go and enter into the domestic market then you will do all such activity by your own you do your production you do your marketing sales by your own then after doing all these things you get into the research and development operation and they will there they will you will get a full fledged idea concentration all those expansion activities and all you will learn then finally you will get into the global motor all of a sudden you may not go right so this is the stage first you do business in your own uh, area then you will go abroad so there there are various uh, globalization uh, uh, strategies which is uh, given in your book uh, exporting is one strategy licensing and franchising contract manufacturing management to contract many things are there but they have given uh, certain things which is uh, uh, given in your uh, 
So the first one is exporting. As you know, like so what is uh, uh, exporting? So you are doing the business uh, across a different country. You are sending your goods to the other country. That is exporting. So this is the first and basic way of uh, globalizing your business. That is one. Licensing and franchising. So I'll say the difference between these two so you will understand. Here, uh, licensing means the licensor does not have the control over the license. Licensor means a person giving a license to the other person. So, I'm giving my license or my reputation to the another person called licensee, but I may not have the control. I've given certain control to the other person and he is doing the business. I can sell the right to use the property of the business program. Either I may sell my business or my property to have so that the licensee may make use of that and do the business in other country. Franchising. Here I have a control. See, franchising, I can say like Starbucks or McDonald's. See, wherever you go, they follow a standard uh, procedure. The seating, the menu, or the atmosphere, everything will be same because I have the control. I, I, I control them like this should be done only by this way. You cannot do on your own. If I'm restricting them, that is called franchising. I have control over the franchisee. The company gives permission to use its brand name as an independent branch. You are using my brand name. You are having the same McDonald's. You are having the, the, the same name in other countries. But you follow the strategy which is followed everywhere by that company. So that's called franchising. Then contract manufacturing. Here the manufacturer makes a contract so, with the firm for the component or certain product. See, I'm producing a product, but certain product I, can, I cannot manufacture. Uh, if I want to have such type of product, I can go and have a, a, a contract with the manufacturing company. So that, they will manufacture that product alone and give me and I will do my the rest of my work and have my product. So that is called contract manufacturing. Uh, then management contracting. Having contract with the certain uh, group for certain time. The agreement between two companies. One country in one company in one country and the other company in another country. Okay. Where one provide all managerial assistance to be other so i'm just providing my services to the other country that's a simple example in in a particular school there is a contract between the school and the canteen master the master may be from other country also and he'll be coming and providing that services and like hospital restaurants etc so one will be in one country and the service provider will be in other country they may come and do the services for you that is called manufacturing contract everything will be the concept is same if you do this uh, man management contract in contract manufacturing in globally then that is called as the global strategy you can follow the same policy here in uh, one locality itself right so globally means you are coming across one country to the other country that's it so these are the global uh, strategies and the last uh, uh, four concept here, turnkey uh, contract, wholly owned uh, uh, manufacturing facilities, joint venture, merger and acquisition. You know merger, merger means it is uh, given in the diagram, A plus B, A company and B company joined to have a new company called C, that is merger. Whereas acquisition means A is acquiring the B. So the B is uh, abolished, only A name will be uh, will be in existence that is merger and acquisition so a company in india which is acquiring b company in canada a company in india b company in the pakistan and c company uh, coming into existence in another one country so that is called the globalization strategy so once understand the concept if that is being dealt with across different countries then that is the global strategy turn key contract means turn the key everything is made ready so i am in india I wanted to have a business in other country. I made everything ready and giving one person the key to just to turn and open the company and do the business. That is the key contract. Fully owned the manufacturing means like uh, wherever the business is concerned, the entire power will be owned by me. And joint venture, you know, establishing two or more independent.
pontos. Now the last topic which is given in your book is about the natural resources and economic development. So about the various natural resources which is given in your book as a paragraph, you can just see to it and uh, you can browse uh, the topic related to this and the current updates about the natural resources, forest, water, fisheries and mineral resources. You have a concept, this question may not come, but understand the concept, you can see to it and see what they are given in the book. So that's it. Your um, unit one is uh, over as we see the first unit now. See, everything is uh, being covered in the uh, first unit about the business environment, corporate uh, social responsibility, corporate governance, economic system that is three system capitalist, socialist, and the mixer economic system economic transition how it is being transited by two ways one is privatization and the other one is the globalization and we saw various globalization strategies and everything and finally the natural resources and economic development i told you to just uh, grow to go through your uh, book so that is about your uh, the first unit the first unit is over hopefully you may have the next uh, class in the next uh, Saturday. We'll see the upcoming unit, the second unit in the next class. Okay, is it okay? Shall we wind up? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, everyone. We'll see you in the next class. Thank you.
Yes, good afternoon, students. Yes, I'm audible. Is my screen is visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes. Am I audible? Ma? Okay, okay. So let me start the previous section. What we discussed, you know. Just wait. Hold on. I think we are discussing on problem number uh, six. No. So problem number six we completed in the last class, right? So we'll continue with the problem number seven. Okay. So try to discuss in this class. Okay. From the following information, calculate net that is for net PV. N present value of the two project and suggest which project has to be upset assuming that the discount rate of 10 percent but that is what the question is asking about okay so they have a two project project ax have an initial investment these 20000 rupee which means that if you are going to start a project yes your initial cost, but you have to pay 20,000 rupees. That will be called as initial outlay. So, whereas project Y has a 30,000 rupees. Okay. And the estimated life of the both of the is given the five, five years and five years. And the scrap value is 1,000 rupees for the first project X. And, uh, 2000 rupees will be the second project scrap value. But it's the thing about when you are reselling the missionary, when you are reselling the plant, you maybe get 1000 rupees from the X and 2000 rupees from the Y. Okay. And the profit before depreciation and, uh, and taxes are given, that is, cash inflows are given. So the cash inflows for the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and fifth year. Okay. It is given for the, for the project, for project X and Y, and you have to calculate which project has to be undertaken. Okay, so far we discussed about in the previous class payback period method and the ARR method, right? The payback period method and ARR method will be called as non discounted technique, or it will be called as non time value adjusted. Okay, whereas this project or this method will be called as time value adjusted or Discounted cash flow training. So we are going to discount the cash flow with respect to time value. Okay, ba? so you should be very clear that because we investing a yeah, twenty thousand rupee today, right? Our zero period, but we are going to get a yeah, five thousand rupee first year later, second year later ten thousand rupee, third year later ten thousand rupee, fourth year three thousand rupee, and fifth year two thousand rupee from the project tax clear up. But when you are going to take a decision. By today, no, because today I'm investing 20,000 rupees, but one year later I'm going to get 5,000, two year later I'm going to get 10,000, and three year later I'm going to get 10,000. So it was not a equal money, right? Because the time value of the money or the purchasing power of the money was not equal throughout the, the time. Clear? Up? So that is why we are going to consider the time adjusted money value. Not simply, we are not going to take simply. 5,000 plus 10,000 plus 10,000 plus 3,000 plus we cannot go to take because the 5,000 I am going to receive after one year, the 10,000 I am going to receive after two years, third year I am going to get a 3, 10,000 rupees, that is the third year later. What is the today value of the 10,000? What is the today value of the 3,000 which is going to receive after fourth year? What is the today value of 2000 which is going to be set after the fifth year? Okay, so we are going to calculate the time value of the money because the purchase power of the money was not equal always. I think we all know. So you can take maybe uh, maybe 10 years before one meter one, one gram of gold. It will be practically it will be somewhat like in a thousand rupee, right? But whereas today one gram of gold is almost five thousand rupee. So can I say that if uh, one gram gold you say about 1,000 rupees after 5 or 10 years. No, no. Because the purchasing power of the money or the value of the goods are will increase always. So that is why we are going to consider that we will simply take 5 plus 10 plus n plus 3 plus 2. That is okay. Because we are not considering the time value of money. But here we are going to consider the time value of money. Clear up. So time value of adjusted, we have a two techniques. One is NPV, another one is IRR. Okay. In this problem, we are asking you to prepare the 
NPV for the net present value of a two project when discount rate at 10 percentage when the inflation are in our cut up rate is 10 percentage or when the money values are reducing by 10 percentage what will be the project NP with that net present value so that we are going to calculate by you are able to follow me up so can I go to the problem now yes is it clear okay if this is clear I was prepared with this excel sheet box okay this is the project X. So net present value of a project X. <laughs> is it here? So first year 5,000 rupees, second year 10,000, third year 10,000, fourth year 3,000, fifth year 5,000. And the fifth year, we are going to get a scrap value of rupees 1000 rupees. Is it clear? That is what we are going to receive from the project X. Okay. So, we already we know that in this problem, it was given at the discount rate at 10 percentage. So, I am going to consider that discount rate. Okay. So, sometime the discount rate maybe will be given in the problem itself okay so 0 0.0 sorry 9.09 0 0.826 0 0.751 or 683 like you may get a time sorry, discounting rate which may be given in the problem or you can itself calculate okay is it clear so how we can calculate the time value of the money there was a problem well, for formal also is there but i'll give us some shortcut okay go to the calculator So in the calculator, one divided by, okay, so note down seven somewhere, the formula equal to one divided by one plus R, okay, power N, one divided by one plus R power N, that was the formula of R to calculate the time value of money, power. okay, if it is 10 percentage mean one divided by 1.R, R is 10 percentage, you know, 10 percentage mean 0 0.10, no? So, I will give 1.10. That's all. Pa. So, this is the first year value. What is the first year value? Pa? 0 0.909, which means that 1 rupee lost its value by 10 percentage. Mean first year end, 1 rupee will be 90, almost 90 paise. Am I right? Almost 90 paise. You are able to follow me. Yeah? So, what is the formula? If it is 8 percentage, 1 divided by 1.08. If it is 11 percentage, 1.1 1 divided by 1.10. If it is a 15 percentage, 1 divided by 1.15. Since it is a 10 percentage, I was giving here 1 divided by 1.10. Clear? Yeah? So, if it is a second year, mean now what we can do? Pa? If it is a second year, mean same 1 divided by 1.10 okay power 2 for the second year power 2 clear 1 divided by 1.1 1 .1 power 2 power 3 will be for the third year power 4 will be for the fourth year like this we can calculate we are able to follow me up so first year Anything power by 1, we will get the same value. You know, that is why we have not mentioned the power value. Whereas the second year and third year and all, we can have a power value. 1 divided by 1.1 power 1. 1 divided by 1.1 .1 power 2 power 3 power 4. Is it clear? In that way, we can calculate the discounted value when it is 10 percentage. Is it clear? We are able to follow me up. So, the, what is the formula to calculate the discount rate? 1 divided by 1 plus R power N. R is 10 percentage. So, since 10 percentage means 1.10, no? So that is why we are maintaining the same one and I have the value also, right? Since your book, it has mentioned that 0 0.09. So listen with me carefully. 0 0.09. Okay.
okay so this is the value for the first year bar so what is the value for the second year now we can calculate 1 divided by 1.1 power 2 what is the value a point 826 that is what mentioned here also in your books also it was mentioned to point 826 so i am 826 so one rupee value first year later it was become 90 paise second year later it was become 82 paise same way third year it was 751 it was point six eight three apa six eight three fifth year sorry fifth year was point six two one okay point six two one okay again sixth year itself we have a same scrap value you know same I am copying and pasting here so we have a time value of the money of one rupee one rupee when it was ten percentage discount rate nine five first year later Today value of 1 rupee, which is going to be received after 2 years, is 82 paise, 75 paise, 68 paise, 62 paise. And this is also 5th year, that is why it was same. Both are 5th year. This both are 5th year. So now I am going to calculate this two. What I am going to do now? 1 rupee is become 90 paise. I mean, what about the 5000 rupees? Simply I am going to multiply. 5000 with respect to this 9.09 bar. I get the 1 rupee value is 90 by say 5000 rupee value is 4545 rupee bar. Simply you can drag since it was Excel sheet, I can drag it to the next cell so that the corresponding cell will be there is 10,000 will be multiplied with the 0.826, it become a 8260. Same way you can multiply with the Remaining years also, you will get one rupee value is mentioned here. 10,000 rupees become 8,000 rupees. Going to receive third year, the total value is 7,500. Okay, 7,500. Same way, 3,000 rupees is received in the fourth year. The value is now 2,049 rupees. In that way, we are calculating the total will be simply you can have a total. What is the total? Okay. So I was having a sum. What is the value here? 24,227. This is what cash, sorry, time value adjusted cash in close. But if you are going to take simple this, okay, so this will be called as a uh, simple adjustment, you know, because we are not considering anything, right? So we received a 20, 31,000 rupee, but whereas a today value of the 31,000, we is going to receive three for five different series. How much power? Only 24,227. So, this is what our present value. Present value means how much you are investing for today? You are investing in the project is 20,000 rupees. 20,000 rupees you are investing in the project. Yes. Whereas, okay, you are going to get only 24,227. So, we are going to deduct the cash outflow this will be called as a present value okay present value equal to 24000 and uh, less you can mention like this itself less initial investment or cash outflow you can mention anything okay i will mention here initial investment how much? 20,000 rupees initially we invested. So, 20,000 rupees invested, but the value is 24,257. So, difference will be your NPV. That is net present value. NPV equal to how much? So that is what mentioned in the book itself. So yeah, present value is 24,227. 20,000 we spent. So this project will give you the 
4,227 as a profit beyond your investment. Today I am spending 20,000 rupees. I am going to receive a certain money which is going to be five different period. So we consider the today value of the five different period value. Today value of the future cash inflows are 24,000. So we adjusted that and you may have a profit of how much per 4,227. Same way we can do for project Y also. Okay. So this is our project X. Same way we can do it for the project Y. Just a minute. Okay. So now it was not project X, project Y. So the cash, the cash inflows of projects Y are not same. 20,000, 10,000, 5,000. So just a minute, I'll change it that. 20,000, 10,000, 5,000. Third year it was 5,000. Fourth year it was 322. Right up, 3,000, 2,000, 3,000, 2,000, last year it was 2,000. Okay. Listen here. So, total cash inflows are 42,000. Clear? Simply I change it, but that's all. Total values are 42,000. Because first year 20, second year 10, third year 5,000, 3,000, 2,000, and scrabble is 2,000 rupees. And you are adjusting with the time value of money. 1 rupee is become 90 paisa, 20,000 will become 18,180. 1 rupee. Become 82 by I mean 10,000 rupee will become 8,260. Same way, 1 rupee will become 5,000 rupee. Mean 75 mean 5,000 will become 3,750. Okay, see in that way, we are able to calculate the future cash inflows. These are all future cash inflows. Today, value is that. Thirty-four thousand rupees. Thirty-four thousand rupees. Seven twenty-eight. So, what is our initial investment? Twenty thousand rupees. So, that I am deducting here. So, the remaining value will be okay. Value will be fourteen thousand seven. So, we can change that fourteen thousand seven twenty-eight. So that is what we were NPV. NPV for the first project is 4,227. And the project Y is for it above our investment. First project is will give you the only four. And the project two can Y can be selected as as cash in goes on. Okay. So again, was so. So, the cash in outflows. No. Project Y is 30,000. Since it is 30,000, we have to change it. It is 30,000, but not 30. It is a mistake. So, it was 30,000. 4,728. In that way also, project Y is better. Because project X is going to give only 4,200. Project Y will be giving you to the 4,728. So anyway, project Y is good because it is going to give 4,700. We can take project Y. Okay, so that is what mentioned here also. So...
project UI will be value of the project and value of the project X since it to go away in a project be selected for your investment. Okay. In that way, the control you are able to hold here. Now they have Simon Tensi two project. Either we can take a possible project as I have not Simon Tensi two. Say I need to do there. Okay. And as a previous problem, we have only cash inflows part. Whereas in this problem, we have a cash inflows along with the probability. What is the probability part? It was given that 0.2 for the first year, the first year. Second, it was 0 0.6. Third, it was 0 0.2. So they are given that already we know the probability. No, the probability will be the total probability one. No, I think we all know, right? Say for example, there are also two games between India and Pakistan. Part. Okay. So the game of cricket or any football you are going to consider, the probability will be two. No. So they may say that there is a chances for winning India is 75 percent, which means that there will be a 25 percent chances for the opposition just will be no. Same way, a probability will be considered as a one. Okay. So it may have multiple time also. If it is in a toss, if you are going to toss a coin, there is a chances for 50 percent you will get up eight. There is a chances for 50 percent you will get it.
Yes, am I audible? Yes, am I audible? I don't know when I left actually. So I don't know which problem we are discussing. Why it was mis disconnected actually? Yes, can I start unit number two now? Sir, so lesson three of unit number two. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. We'll take now the unit number two, lesson three. Pa. Okay. So lesson three, we are going to discuss about the capital rationing. Since we discussed in the previous problem, we know about the mutually exclusive project. No, what do you mean the mutually exclusive? So when the business have a limited fund. So they cannot take a simultaneously two project. Okay, so they can take either project A or project B. In that time, it will be called as a mutually exclusive project. In that time, only we can go to the capital rationing. Okay, capital rationing is nothing but we'll go by a priority based. Okay, not by if you have sufficient money, we can think for extension, we can think for an another what do you call by another plan also. But whereas in a uh, what do you call short or money fund is very short uh, scarcity in that time we cannot go by like this okay so we can go by a uh, capital rationing so it is nothing but if firm is not in a position to invest in the all profitable project due to the constraint on the available fund even though the business may have uh, multiple projects and the multiple projects also having a profitability if they cannot go by taking the all the project the problem is they have some limited resources Assume that you have only 50 lakh rupee, but you have some five projects. Each project are requiring 50 lakhs, and each product will give you the more profit. So, in that time, we cannot take all the five. No, we can take any one. No, because my available fund is just 50 lakh rupee. In that 50 lakh, which project is very good, I'll go by like this. That will be called as a capital rationing. So, based on your availability of fund, we can go by the capital rationing part. In that time, you are going to understand the or you are going to analyze the business project by taking the three decisions. Okay, so in that it will be called as an uncertainty, risk and uncertainty. So we are going to use the first method is only by risk alone. Sorry, only by uncertainty. Right, sometimes the economic condition will be very good. It will be called as a boom situation. Sometimes economic condition will be very normal. Sometimes the economic condition will be very worst also. It will be called as a recession. Okay, in that time, whether the project is going to give a profit or not. In that way, we are going to calculate. Okay, well, it will be called as an uncertainty approaches. So, when the we have a limited resources, we need to understand that which project has to be invested in a particular time. Okay, so we are going to use uncertainty. Okay, in uncertainty, these are the problem you may be encounter. So there is the problem of uncertainty in the price. So this year the condition is very good. That's why you have a you are able to sell at your expected price. Due to the next year, the company will come to your market and there will be any price uncertainty. And the production also may be an uncertainty. The production technology may be an uncertainty, right? Because you are using old technology. And if the new technology are taking place. So what will happen? You are, will be thrown out of the from the market. Again, we are going to get a Lok Sabha election result. You know? So nobody knows who is going to be the next prime minister of the country. If the Narendra Modi is going to come again, or maybe the new party is going to take a picture. So these are will be called as a political uncertainty. So these are the factors that are influencing the business projects also. Okay. So we are going to consider that also in your business part. Okay. So what may be the precautions for uncertainty? What type we can do it? Certain things we can avoid, certain things we cannot avoid. Right? In that time, what may be the precaution you can take it granted or take it ready so that you can avoid certainly or you can, uh, what do you call, you can uh, age over the, the political uncertainty and all. Okay. So, these are all will be your unit number 
or lesson number three pa. okay in that time they may use the standard deviation also pa. i think in the statistics in the first semester or this semester you have statistics also paper no so statistics you may have uh, npv no sorry uh, what do you call it standard deviation or covariance or correlation and all right so these are the technique can be used to evaluate the cash inflows okay so we are going to use the standard deviation so the standard deviation function can be used to understand the business cash inflows so what is the deviation you may get so normally i may get a 10000 rupee in a monthly but sometime it may vary 12000 rupees sometime it may vary even 7000 rupees also you have some standard deviation no because maybe salary people we, they may say that monthly your salary is some fixed amount but 10000 rupees what about business okay so business will not be in a always in a straight line no sometime the when conditions are very good the people will buy they will, they can buy they will maybe in a, assume there are manufacturing in a two wheeler bar. okay hero honda manufacture company do you think the manufacturing of hero honda will be same throughout the country here no no because your competitor will capture your market if sometime the economic condition won't be good people will, you know, don't have money to buy the two wheeler and all so the condition will not be same we cannot say that every year i'm going to get one lakh units of sales no but at salary of the uh, government employee or any private employee, it will be somewhat fixed. Whereas business, it is not a fixed, you know. In that time, we can say that the revenue of the business will be a 1 lakh rupee with a variation of some 10,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees. So in that way, we can avoid the uncertainty. Okay. So these are all will be your unit number 2, lesson 3. So these are the techniques also can be used. So shorter payback median method and the risk adjusted discounted already we discussed it in the previous example no so we can adjust it risk adjusted also we can calculate risk adjusted okay so risk adjusted time value of money also we can consider and all. okay so here also we don't have any problem actually so i'll go to the <coughs> next us lesson part. okay lesson number four of unit number two okay so next item is the cost of the capital okay so the cost of capital is nothing but uh, these are the people who are actually contributing money to the business are actually contributing money to the project okay so it is nothing but if my required rate or if your required rate is something you have to think a project that has to be more than the required rate okay so that will be called as a uh, cost of capital okay i'll put like this one say for example you are borrowed money from the bank okay and bank given an uh, interest at the eight percentage at uh, 5 lakh rupees they gave you at 8 percentage interest. How much you have to pay interest per? So, 5 lakh at 8 percentage interest. 8 means 0 0.08 percentage interest. How much you have to pay interest? 40,000 rupees you have to pay interest. Okay. So, with this 5 lakh, you are investing in a business. If the business is earning only 35,000 rupees, is it sufficient to you pay the uh, the bank interest? It is not sufficient to no? know. My cost of capital rates of 8 percentage. Clear? So I borrowed the money. With that only I am doing a business. The money, money I have to pay here is 8 percentage. Okay. That is 40,000 rupees I have to pay. If my projects are able to give only 12 percentage or 10 percentage only, it is profit to me. Clear up. You are able to follow me. If I am able to get a 50,000 rupee, I can run my business. Because bank kids are able to pay 40,000 rupee. If you are able to get a only 35 and 12,000 or 20,000 rupee, you cannot do your business. No. So that is what we call it as a cost of capital is the minimum required rate of return, earnings of the capital expenditure okay if you are spending for something for your project so that is also from the borrowed money borrowed money itself you have to pay eight percentage interest 
so what you are going to pay for your borrowed money no so that will be called as a cost of capital if you are paying 8% interest on the bank loan the 8% is the bank interest side that will be called as a cost of capital okay ma so the cost of capital have many types it may be a owner own money it may be a borrowed money it may be in a preference shareholder money it may be a retained earning money also so there will be four types of capital will be there okay so we are going to calculate each capital value that is cost of the capital value the capital not only by the owner it is also from the debt to owner also okay so we are going to calculate in that way pa okay so the capital budgeting is the sorry cost of capital is the very crucial for capital budgeting decision okay the reason is just now we explained you know if my bank is given a loan at 8 percentage i need to think a plan i need i have a supposed to plan for a project which is going to give at least 8 percentage or above 8 percentage so that only i can repay my loan i can repay my interest clear so i have to pay 8 percentage if the investment is giving 6 percentage why should i do that project because you are going to lose 2 percentage clear so that is the another crucial decision for capital budgeting part okay and the capital structure decision so it is nothing but when you have a balance sheet so the balance sheet you may have a three to four category of capital owner money own money sorry owner money or outside money or retained earning or preference shareholder money okay so what is the proportional you are going to keep it as a owner money or loan money okay or preference share money so that and all will be discussed based on the capital budgeting because capital budgeting is the another influencing for the your capital structuring decision also okay so determination of cost of capital we have some problem actually we are going to have a computation of cost of equity and the cost of retained earnings and a, uh, what do you call the cost of your preference share also okay so these are the problem we are going to discuss here the first one is cost of preference share capital we can discuss for okay so it is nothing but we can calculate like this part. so okay so the cost of preference capital will be called as ne? sometime it will be called as ne? kp or cp pa. somebody will mention some books you may mention the kp cost of capital mean k preference share capital will be called as ne? kp or some books they may refer cp also the cost of the preference share capital cost of the debt mean cd cost of the equity mean ce like this they will mention in some uh what you call some symbols okay so the symbol will be cpf okay so okay so this is the cost of capital formula okay so it was CP before tax equal to rate of dividend divided by 1 divided by 1 minus corporate tax rate into 100. Okay. So that is the formula we can use to calculate the cost of the preference shareholder. Okay. So for example, they give the dividend rate is given for 10 percent is the dividend rate and the corporate tax rate is 65 percentage per. So, what will be the preference share capital value? So, they are asking to calculate the preference share capital value. So, we can simply substitute that the rate of return is 0 0.10, that is 10 percentage, 1 divided by 1.65. 65 means 65 percentage, you know, 1.65 into 100. Per. Okay. It is giving you the rate of 28 percentage, per, which means that whenever you are borrowing your money from the preference shareholder, at 10 percentage when interest sorry when the tax are prevailing in the country 65 percentage mean you are paying at a 28.6 percentage bar. even though it's looking at 10 percentage you are paying at a 28.6 percentage which means that every one rupee you are earning you are paying 28 paise to your preference shareholder that is what it is mentioning is it clear
es Ok, ok, Nítez. Ok, so whereas in the equity share, the cost of equity will be very difficult to calculate because cost of preference will be very easy because the reason is the cost of preference share the expectation from the preference shares are very limited. They cannot expect the entire over profit. Am I right? That is why they have a called as a preference shareholder. If the preference shareholder in dividend rate is 10 percentage, mean every year we have to pay only 10 percentage. Even no profit, you have to pay 10 percentage. Even if you have a 100 percentage profit also, we have to pay only 10 percentage. That is what we have a preference shareholder. Whereas equity shareholder or common shareholder expectation is very high. So that is why the cost of the equity shareholder is very difficult to measure. The problem is their expectation is very big. They cannot say that because they are the actual owner. No, actual owner will be expectation is very more. Whatever paying a tax and a dividend of preference shareholder that is meant for preference equity shareholder. No, so the equity shareholder is very high expected people are they are the actual owner of the people, right? So it is very difficult to understand the cost of the equity because cost of the equity have a many methodologies. Whereas cost of the debt and cost of preference share is very easy because their expectation from the business is very limited. Okay, if you are borrowed money from the bank, how much you have to pay interest? Only the interest rate. No, if the interest is eight percentage, you have to pay only eight percentage. Am I right? So you are not going to pay beyond that. You are able to follow me, Abba. So, even though if you don't have a profit, you have to pay 8% of your loan money. If you have 100% profit, also you have to pay only 8% of your loan money. That is why you borrowed money. But whereas if you are borrowed money from the equity shareholder and you say that, so I will share your profit. Okay, in that time, the profit will be very small. Profit will be very small. Because whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas the equity shareholder is very high expected people. Whereas and uh, up with this, they are concluded that the cost of equity. Okay, so far we discussed about cost of preference share, cost of equity, and the cost of the retained earnings. Okay, retained earnings is nothing but the company have their own reserve and surplus. No, right? So, what is paid after the tax, after the preference dividend, after the equity owner? Sometimes the company may retain their profit for the future expansion. Okay. That is also owner money. Okay. So if they are not paid to owner, if they are retaining business itself, that will be called as a cost so retained earnings or reserve and surplus. So that surplus also having a cost because you are not given to the owner. So that money you are retaining, what is the cost of the retained earnings? So that is also we can calculate. For. So the cost of retained earnings equal to the formula is given. That is earnings, that is available money. 1 minus TP that is divided by market price of the value. Okay. So the TP is nothing but the personal income tax rate. So income tax rate is in the country is 10 percent or 20 percentage mean. So that you can consider to calculate the cost of an retained in EPA. Okay. So far we discussed about three prominently three we discussed right equity, preference share, and retained in EPA. So once this is clear, we can go to the weighted average cost of capital, which is nothing but the company may have debt to capital, equity capital, 
preference capital and retained earning capital part. So we are going to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, not simply taking an average. Equity capital is 25 percentage and debt capital is 50 percentage. Preference capital is 15 percentage and uh, retained earnings is 15 percent. In that time, what may be the equity share capital? Okay, wow. so we may calculate in that way also. Okay, so it is nothing but weight based. We are going to calculate. Okay, so here the problem is given. Okay, so the equity proportionate is only 25 percentage of out of your 100 rupee money. So debt capital is out of 100 rupee over 50 rupee pa. Preference capital is out of 100 rupee over 10 rupee. And the retained earnings out of 100 rupee over 15 rupee. So these are all total is 100 rupee pa. So we have 100 rupee, which is 25 percentage from equity and 50 percentage from the debt and 10 percentage from the preference share capital and 15 percentage from the retained earnings. So the total 100 rupees, which is having a four constitution or four combination. And the profit before tax of the capital is given. Equity share capital value is 25 percentage and the preference share capital is 50 percentage, sorry, 8 percentage. Preference share capital is 23 percentage and uh, retained earnings are 19 percent. They are given at that rate also. Simply we are multiplying. Okay. So 25 into 24. So 600 rupees we have to pay for the preference shareholder, sorry, equity shareholder. Debt capital we have to pay only 400 rupees. 400 rupees. Same with preference share capital, you have to give only 230. So, this divided by this will give you the weighted average share of capital value. What is the weighted share capital value? 100 rupees we invested, and this is the corresponding interest rate and corresponding dividend rate, and corresponding the car capital value. We simply multiplying 25 into 24, 600, 50 into 8 will be 400, 10 into 23, 23 into 230, 15 into 19, we have 285, and we have a total of that. It will be called as 15,000, that is 1,515. For that, we how much you are supposed to pay? 100 rupees, you know, the 15.15 percentage is your cost of capital value. Okay, well, these are all will be called as the before tax rate. And if the tax rates are prevailing at a 45 percentage, we can mention that also, but that is 15.15 percentage into 1 minus 55. Okay, so the remaining will be your after cap uh, tax cost of capital okay so in that way we can calculate bar. okay same problem there are one or two problem mentioned here so i think with this unit number three is over i think so sorry two is over so i'll have one or two problem with this we have another 10 minutes no so we'll have one or two problem with this and we'll Try to discuss unit number three in the next class for next week. Okay, so listen here FM finance all its investment by 40 percentage debt and 60 percentage by equity. The estimated recovered rate of an equity is 20 percentage after tax is given. Okay, of the debt is 8 percentage. The firm is considering investment proposal of costing rupees 40,000 rupees. If it is expected to return on the low, what do you call the last for return. What is the amount or in rupee must be proposal yield rate so that the market price of share does not change. Okay. Show the calculation to prove your point is given here. Okay. So first we have to understand the question. So the question is the firm has a 60 percentage on and the equity money and the 40 percentage of the debt money okay so and then they are given the equity rate also what is the equity rate they're given uh, the equity rate is 20 percentage and the debt rate is eight percent so we are calculating now overall cost of capital how we can calculate simply like a previous example we discussed you know 40 percentage of debt into 8 percentage of interest rate. So, this is the interest that is supposed to pay for debt money. Same way, 60 percentage into 0 0.2 will be your this one. So, the weighted average cost of capital is how much? 15.2. Okay, simply weight divided by the interest rate. And 15.2 is the overall cost of capital. And uh, so, we know that how much you have to get back at least a uh, 
15.2 percentage we have to get back your investment okay and uh, here the proposal is costing of 40000 rupees pa okay so whether this 40000 is sufficient for your return so that we are going to calculate here the investment proposal 40000 which is multiplied with 15.2 percentage is how much pa 6080 rupees we have to earn in a year if you are earning 6080 rupees it is sufficient for us pa okay so that is what we need to discuss here so 6080 rupees how we calculated for 40000 our cost of investment 15.2 percentage you have to pay put together of your debt and equity so that 6080 rupees we have to receive and uh, interest is how much pa so 40 percentage interest is how much for 40000 rupees so 40 percentage of 40000 listen with me pa carefully it is very short problem only so the company had a plan to invest of 40000 rupees pa in that 40 percentage they are planning from debt to money and maybe loan money from bank okay what will be the 40 percentage of 40000 rupees 16000 rupees they are going to borrow from bank so what is the remaining money for 40000 into 60 percentage 24000 rupees from the owner or equity money 60000 from 16 from the debt money pa. and we have to pay for the both the people no so 16000 we have to pay interest at 8 percentage 6 24000 you have to pay dividend at 20 percentage so that is what we are going to calculate here so what is the value for 16,000 is the money 16,000 in the 0.08 rupees we have to pay interest okay for 16,000 borrowed money which is 8 percentage interest is this you are able to follow me up what is the second one is 24,000 we buy we take a money from the equity shareholder by issuing a shares into 20 percentage that is what mentioned there 0.20 how much per 4,800 so that is what we say that 4,800 we have to pay for your uh, equity shareholder 1,280 we have to pay for debt to order, adventure order our own money so 6,080 rupees so that is what we mentioned here okay so 6080 rupees we have to pay it is the in this combination part is it clear this you are able to follow me up so we have a two money from that 40000 is the money we are going to invest for the project the 40000 we are getting from the two different people one is equity owner and the debt owner debt owner we are going to pay only 8 percentage and equity owner we are going to pay 20 percentage so the 20 percent is requirement we calculated 8 percent is requirement we calculated put together it was 6080 rupees okay so in that way we can add the cost of capital based the proposal how much we are going to meet it here okay if this is clear i think we can conclude the problem i think we if you have a time we can discuss one or two problem in the next class and we'll have we can go to the unit number three okay unit number three we'll discuss in the next class Okay, so capital structure theories and alpha. If you have any doubt, let me know. Otherwise, we can conclude the today class. Yes. Is it clear? So, can we conclude today class? If you have doubt, let me know. Pa. Okay, okay, Nikhil. Thank you. So we'll meet in the next class. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Whether my voice is audible? Hello, good afternoon. Whether my voice is audible? Okay, thank you. Sorry, today we are going to see the unit two, but we are talking about unit two. That's okay. Basically, we are going to see the concept like uh, entrepreneurial um, motivation theory, then entrepreneurial competencies, developing competencies, and role of uh, entrepreneurship development program, assistant program for uh, small scale units, then and its uh, institutional framework, role of SSI sector in economy, and SSI units, their failure cost. I mean, what are the causes for the failure, and how we can prevent? And then we can going to see the turnover strategy. These are the of presentation for the day okay so uh, basically that before starting with these things like we need to discuss about this thing basically the entre entrepreneurial or uh, entrepreneurial motivation theory starts with the basic point like motivation will be the starting point of the need okay if then <clears throat> whenever you'll get uh, more i mean when uh, whenever you have a need you'll get motivated right this is a basic thing. so that's why the need is the starting point of Motivation a satisfied de, uh, need does not motivate an individual. Only the unsatisfied need create tension and stimulate drive within the individual for the satisfaction of the need and reduction of tension. This is a basic part of uh, theories of motivation. So then entrepreneurial as large risk associated with it. Okay, basically and entrepreneurial activities having uh, includes of uh, risk factor. Okay. But still, people prefer to become entrepreneur because of the several motivating factor. Some thinkers have explained what motivates an individual to pursue entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship through different theories. Like we can take it like basic two theories. One is Maslow's needs theory, and the other one is McKellen's achievement motivation theory. Both are need-based theory. Uh, at most, uh, we'll see this theory part. Right? Okay. So, with the uh, <clears throat> Maslow's actually he you know is a basic uh, is a psychologist and uh, he proposed a hierarchy need theory okay which suggests that human needs can be arranged in hierarchical order from the basic psychology uh, sorry physiological needs to the high level uh, psychological needs basically starts with physiological needs to the psychological need understanding Maslow theory is crucial for a comprehending and motivational factor that drive entrepreneurs uh, to establish and grow in the, their business okay. So basically what this physiological needs talks about this physiological needs talks about the needs for a fundamental survival as well as the it, it means the survival includes like food shelter clothing and other basic necessities for a human living then uh, how it is relevant to the entrepre entrepreneurs like entrepreneurs are often driven by the desire to secure basic livelihoods as well the meet essential survival needs through the success of their venture whenever they are success in the venture only they are able to do the survival part so that way it is in, uh, uh, means having the uh, what is it, correlation then uh, safety and security needs is the second needs like uh, one once the physiological needs are met then people will think about the safety measures like you will seek safety stability and protection from the physical and economic threats this is the second part how uh, means using the entrepreneurs i mean uh, entrepreneurs using the entrepreneurship activity uh, to attain this financial security as well as stability through their ventures I mean, with aiming to mitigate the risk, okay, and create secure future. This is happened uh, with the help of entrepreneurship activity. So next, next one is social need. After achieving this basic uh, official explanation, now we'll move to the social needs. Like social needs involve the desire for belongingness, acceptance, and meaningful relationship with others. So entrepreneurs build a network, engage with their peers, then employees and customers, and seek recognition, acceptance within their business communities. Okay, then next self esteem needs like self esteem means you know, encompass of self confidence, recognition, achievement, and status. Though 
the entrepreneurs, I mean, entrepreneurs provides that opportunity. Okay, this entrepreneurship provides an opportunity for an individual to become an autonomy, leadership, and self-fulfillment, satisfying the need of self-esteem and accomplishment. That last one is self-actualization. It it is the self, uh, it is this the a realization of one full potential personal growth and uh, and like uh, pursuit for individual aspiration okay so that entrepreneurs allow the individual to pursue creative endeavors like innovative and make meaningful impact align with the self actualization goals so based on this needs these uh, requirements no human requirements will be given by maslow's this particular needs will be fulfilled with the help of entrepreneurial activity so that's why people are wish to do entrepreneurial activity to get uh, you know get all this uh, needs you know get fulfilled so this is a basic motivation part okay then the uh, second theory is discussing about uh, three part like need of power need of achievement need of affiliation okay so david mckellen's uh, psychologist developed a need for achievement theory which and uh, you know encompass the role of three primary needs like one need is like power other one is affiliation and third one is achievement so in motivating human behavior particularly in entrepreneurial context understanding these motivation factor is essential for uh, comprehending what drive the individual to pursue entrepreneurial venture okay so need for need for power it means like this need is to categorize by the desire to influence and control others seeking to lead and direct people so entrepreneurs with a high need of power often uh, thrive in a leadership role seeking to extract influence and drive changing in their organization and industries so obviously like we'll give an example an entrepreneur who established a tech startup and aims to disrupt the industry by leading innovative projects and share you uh, know shaping the market so you'll get a power on it so next part is like we can say a need of achievement this need is categorized by or uh, means this need to be having certain features by a strong desire to excel and set and achieve, uh, achieve changing goals and take personal responsibility for success so what how it is relevant for this uh, entrepreneurs entrepreneurs have high need for achievement are driven by the passion of excellence consistently striving for surpass the benchmarks and innovate within their industries okay so in for regular example you can say like the serial entrepreneurs the serial entrepreneurs also call it as a professional entrepreneurs who sets ambitious target then uh, they embarrasses challenges and continuously seeking opportunity for growth and accomplishment next one is like need for affiliation this is needs reflects a desire to build and maintain positive relationship seeking acceptance and connection with other so the entrepreneurs with a high need for affiliation focusing on building strong network fostering partnership and creating supportive uh communities around their ventures so by one of things to be uh, you know to come into the entrepreneur business path so next one is like competency entrepreneurial competencies okay so there are two things are there before starting with this competency we can say like uh, uh, what do you mean difference between this we need to know the definitions of like competency as well as competence okay so by this like he described that competence as a characteristics characteristics of an entrepreneur which result in forming a superior or effective performance in the business activity then so second one is the hoax defined that competency as demonstration of characteristics including skills and abilities which result in superior business performance so we will think like mostly will people will think that uh, competence as well as competency are interchangeably we are using but but both are not same okay uh, then for this that uh, mckellen's the gives uh, describe this difference like okay so the basic difference between these two comp uh, is two is that competency is underlying character of an entrepreneur and competency is the behavioral aspect of the entrepreneur uh, behavioral aspect of the character of the entrepreneur so this was First, we'll uh, know about this competency as well as uh, competence. Then we'll go for the next aspect, like uh, entrepreneurial competencies, like along uh, under which what are the attributes for the entrepreneurial competency? Okay, so that the uh, knowledge, skill, and motivates are the major attributes or components of the entrepreneurial competency. 
So we can say knowledge refers to the acquisition and retention of information relevant for a business operation and management. So that is the knowledge. So knowledge provides a foundation of for understanding business concept and strategy for a best practices. Uh, this way it will plays a role in an entrepreneurial activity. Then how the skill will be plays a uh, thing. First we need to know what is skill. Skill is a practical application of knowledge to accomplish the task and achieve the tangible outcome. So skill enables the entrepreneur to translate their knowledge into the effective of action and business operation. So based on the knowledge they, and the skill they will do in this one. Last one is motivation. Motivation represents the drive and determination to achieve entrepreneurial goals and overcome challenges. So motivation fuels the per persistence and the uh, resilience and commitment re uh, no, required for uh, entrepreneurial success. So this model, <coughs> this is a model for, sorry, this is a model created by Connor. Uh, 2012 suggests the model for entrepreneurial competency through mathematical equation by using uh, about discuss attributes. Okay, so competency is equal to competence plus commitment. So whereas like uh, competence means like knowledge plus skill, uh, skill. Okay, knowledge. Then commitment is equal to one's deep motivation. This three, that's why these three attributes are the important attributes we are discussing. So what are the basic entrepreneurial competencies we are We'll see now like uh, <clears throat> before this one this competence we are discussing before that we need to know one thing whether we have two uh, school of thoughts regarding like uh, entrepreneurs having like we say uh, are born in quality okay so Okay, sorry like uh, <clears throat> so this theories discuss like uh, people uh, entrepreneurs having that inborn quality and someone will say no entrepreneurs is like we can uh, uh, it's not inborn quality like two, two debatable things are there most of the people believe that only those entrepreneurs who succeed those uh, having family background in business so these beliefs support that myth that entrepreneurs are born and but they are not uh, okay okay that is the main things like and they have the myth like entrepreneurs are born but they are not so many example uh, contact with the myth sub, uh, support the other factors of entrepreneurs are not uh, you know born uh, like having inborn quality even made quality also entrepreneurs can become successful by acquiring knowledge and skill set through education and experience by means of education and experience also we can able to become mm -hmm. an entrepreneur so that was this other uh, contradict uh, theories will be there so there are two theories will be saying like one is entrepreneurs are born in an inborn quality other one is like entrepreneurs are made so if it is there both the things are there so entrepreneurs the so for which the entrepreneurship development institute of india edi akamadabad and, and many other researchers conducted research studies on this debatable topic the following uh, are the major entrepreneurial competences defined by the researchers which make successful entrepreneurs a result in superior performance like uh, we will we'll just list out the things like uh, initiation is the first and foremost competency of an uh, entrepreneur second one is entrepreneur must be vigilant when learn from mistake and make a force to overcome so based on previous mistakes we have and to overcome the hurdles like right? so learn from the past mistakes like and then that, that will be utilized like how to overcome the hurdles like then um, try to gather as much of information from research and individuals uh, as information helps to achieve goals so because information is wealth no so that is there and the quality con consciousness is the key to uh, achieve success and beat existing standard because if you are losing your quality obviously you are not able to succeed in a business so next one is like full dedication and determination to complete the task efficiency is the efficiency is the key to success in business formulation of realistic and well researched plan proper and effective implementation of plan then never give up attitude and look for a solution for our problem this is the basic quality of an entrepreneur because uh, last class also we have discussed like entrepreneurs always having a, so much of struggle to be survive in the survive in their business so uh, they may face so much of hurdles and difficulties so they need to overcome so for which they need to have the never give up attitude and then self-confidence and self-belief is the most important on, on the competencies 
then uh, convincing and persuasive personality, efficient manager, then al always consider employee as a family member and try to work in the team. Okay, and growth oriented and entrepreneur, uh, no, enterprising persons, uh, then uh, considering other opinion and suggestion, proper utilization of resources, will to take risk and adaptive nature, high motivation and high need achievement. So these are the basic uh, uh, things in case of uh, what is it? competencies of entrepreneurs and next part is like there are again other than the above discussed competency the following are very important performance tasks successful uh, to and get desired results so these are the base, uh, no very important competencies you'll see that's so why you'll see this one a little later in part like first one is strategic competencies to ability to develop and execute the strategic plans to navigate the competitive landscape and counter revival action so these are most important things in case of uh, competencies Strategy is the most important to success in a business. Strategy competence enable the entrepreneur to anticipate market dynamics, uh, adapt to industry trends, and differentiate their offerings effectively. Then full commitment, so strong dedication and motivation to overcome obstacles, challenges, uh, traditional norms, and achieving sustained business success. The role like so, this is like full commitment empowers the entrepreneur to perceive through the you know adversity. Maintaining focus on long-term objectives and drive impactful changes. Then uh, concept development, analytical powers to identify complex business challenges and develop innovative concepts and solutions. Okay, so next one is opportunity seeking, like a proactive approach to identify, capturing and leveraging market opportunity to deliver superior value to the customers. Then next one is relationship management and uh, interpersonal skills to cultivate and maintain positive relationship with stakeholders including employees customers and business partners okay the next one is organizational competencies leadership acumen to inspire motivate and manage team then the coupled with the strategic planning and implementation capabilities they need to have the organizational camp, uh, camp competency and uh, learning attitude in, in case of learning attitude like uh, the continuous learning mindset to glean uh, means insights from experience adapt to ch changing circumstance and uh, you know gaining so much of knowledge is important things so the continuous learning is important part in case of uh, entrepreneurial activities that learning attitude enhance the entrepreneurial resilience uh, agility and capacity to innovate in response to market dynamics okay Then, uh, what is it? Competitive competency is other important aspect. Then, uh, <clears throat> what is it? Mm. Okay. So next one is like competitive, uh, competitive competencies, willing and ability to adopt the new technology, embarrass like challenging uh, changes <coughs> and leverage innovations to maintain competitive advantages. The competitive uh, competency empowers entrepreneurs to harness in technology, optimize business process and stay ahead for uh, industry disruptions. Okay, next one is social responsibility. So this is also one of the prominent uh, competencies like then uh, <clears throat> okay. so this is the last part even though this is an important one like commitment to the ethical business practices and environmental stewardship and com uh, community engagement is one of the important competencies for uh, any you know business or entrepreneurs like social responsibility enhance the brand reputation uh, fosters com customer loyalty and adverse means and diverse like sustainable business practices okay 
So along next one is like developing competencies. How we can develop these competencies? Like I for this like in collaboration with the D McCullens, that famous behavioral scientist like EDA. We already discussed entrepreneurial and entrepreneurship development into like Ahmedabad conducted a famous Kakinada experiment and found that entrepreneurial competencies can be developed and injected into the entrepreneur's mindset through proper uh, mentoring, education, and training. So the Kakinara experiment suggests that following four tools and or methods to sharpen entrepreneurs' uh, competencies. Like what are the four major things? Like competency identification and recognition, then competency assessment, then competency mapping, and then development interventions. Okay. So we'll see uh, in little detail about this one. Like first one is competency identification and recognition. This is a steps begins with the understanding of concept of competency and its attributes in entrepreneurship. So it involves identifying essential elements required for a successful task completion, which can be vary depending upon the business context. Okay. So the second one is competency assessments. After identifying the competencies, the next step, step, step is to assess the entrepreneur's existing competency against the established standard. So we have framing the standard. We need to, you know, compare like otherwise, I mean, we need to compare with the uh, existing competency of an entrepreneur. This involves evaluating their readiness to start a business and identifying any additional requirements through target questions and assessment. Next one is competency mapping. Once the competencies are assessed, they are mapped against required competencies for success. This process involves identifying competencies gaps and determining crucial skills that need development using tools like a skill to do and what will I mean um, build to do like the chart we need to feel like skill to do and will to do the chart need to be framed so that is because uh, competency mapping and the last one is like development intervention the final step involved developing the injecting necessary competencies okay developing and injecting the necessary competencies through education and training entrepreneurs then practice these competencies in a real world business scenario with ongoing review and feedback to refine and strengthening their skills there are certain roles played by the entrepreneurial development program so we'll say like national institute of small industry and extension training uh, hyderabad defined that edp first what do we we need to know what is mean by entrepreneur development program okay as they define like this like an attempt to develop a person as entrepreneur through structural training the main objective of this such entrepreneurship development program is to develop entrepreneurship through increasing achievement motivation and entrepreneurial skill among less privileged section of this society. So that uh, an EDP consists of the following essential components. What are they? The need for program, main objective of the program, design of the program, and last one is evaluation and feedback. So you'll see <coughs> what are the objectives of this EDP? Okay. The main objectives of this entrepreneurial development program as follows, like uh, develop entrepreneurship and strengthen the entrepreneurial base and quality, promote and develop small scale business that in, uh, you know increase self-employment, analyzing the surrounding environment to identify opportunity and lying in that environmental setup, then uh, <clears throat> help prospective and, and entrepreneurs to select the type of business and product to rent an enterprise, then train individuals to prepare project and proposal or business plan, educate prospective entrepreneurs about the process of setting up an enterprise, then uh, inform about the sources from where entrepreneurs can get financial and other support for starting an entrepreneurial activity, developing entrepreneurial competencies that result in superior business performance. <coughs> Identifying of necessary characteristics of an entrepreneurship and uh, inclusion of the required ones. Then develop a first generation entrepreneur who want to start up their own business but requires some guidance and assistance. Okay. Then in continuation with that, to establish the fact of entrepreneurs are made or not born, to help the entrepreneurs to choose the best business idea or in establishment of their enterprise, develop an entrepreneur so that he or she can select the best location and identify the target comes for a business to motivate the entrepreneur to develop high need achievement to to impart necessary knowledge and skill to run an entrepreneur uh, business successfully to know the relative advantage and disadvantage of choosing entrepreneurship preparing entrepreneurs to de deal with the uncertainty in the world entrepreneurship then develop the broad vision of, about the entrepreneurship 
develop passion of entrepreneurship dedication determination of honesty for business making aware about the various policy schemes and statutory regulation for a good sorry, of a government for that business then uh, in incorporating basic management skill which are prerequisites for entrepreneurship prepare entrepreneurship to take fast accurate and strategic decision enable prospect prospect entrepreneurs to accept the challenges and pose a risk of an entrepreneur so this or whatever discusses like basic objective so now we'll come to the point of the role okay what are the basic role will be done by the uh, entrepreneurship development program okay first one is identifying and nurturing the entrepreneurial talent so the edp are designed to identify and nurture the individuals with the entrepreneurial potential you need to identify and nurture the potential of the particular person or individual through various selection process including assessment and interviews edp by a ping point the candidate who exhibit traits can the uh, no conduct to entrepreneurship such as innovation risk taking uh, propensity and determination okay so next one is providing this comprehensive training education um So the EDP offer offer a structured training and education tailored to needs of the aspiring entrepreneur. So it will be not common for like everyone. Na? Suppose that entrepreneurship training is given for a student, so for them for their level they will tailor it. Like if they are giving the things for a researchers, or if you are giving the for an uh, other individuals, like based on their requirements, that program will be tailor made. This includes workshops, seminar, lectures, and hands-on activities covering topics such as. business planning financial management and the strategic creation like legal consideration and operational aspects then uh, next part next one is like developing entrepreneurial competencies so edp focus on developing the key entrepreneurial competencies like business acumen like understanding market dynamic customer needs and com uh, competitive landscape and you will give the developing the competencies like financial literacy acquiring the skills in budgeting financial planning and investing analysis investment analysis then leadership and management uh, competency to create like cultivating ability to lead the team make strategic decision and manage the resource effectively then next one is like innovation and uh, means along with that other uh, what is it competencies like innovation and creativity to encourage innovating th innovative thinking problem solving abilities and adoption to changes they will create the uh, it pro you know entrepreneurship development program that can create the competencies like, like networking and relationship building the facilitating the connection with the mentors industry experts investors and potential collaborators then uh, next two point is like fostering an entrepreneurial mindset after instill an entrepreneurial mindset characteristics by resilience initiative self motivation and proactive approach to seizing opportunity a participants are encouraged to embrace risk taking then uh, learn from failures and persist in the pursuing their uh, and uh, organizational goals okay next two one is like facilitate access to resource and support how they are facilitating how to how a particular individual can access resources and support for a framing an entrepreneurial business edp provides the access are a network of resources including incubators accelerators fund opportunities and mentoring program they also offer guidance on accessing government schemes market uh, linkages and industry connection essential for business growth then next one is like promoting a uh, sustainable business development it emphasizes sustainable business practices promoting ethical entrepreneurship environmental responsibility and social impact participants are encouraged to consider a long term viability so uh, scalability and self reliance in their business venture the next one is empower individuals for diverse backgrounds so people are coming from different background no? so we need to empower everyone no? so that way the edp includes you and cater the individual from diverse background and including women entrepreneur youth minority youth minorities and rural populations they aim to empower an un, 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 okay under represented group by uh, providing an uh, equal access to <coughs> entrepreneurial op opportunity and support the next one is driving economic growth and job creation so this obviously this edp program is driving the force for economic growth as well as the job, job creation aspect by nurturing the uh, skilled and motivated entrepreneurs edp contributed to the economic growth job creation and wealth generation the successful well ventures launches to edp stimulate local economies promote innovation and enhance competitiveness and uh, next one is like evaluation impact and continuous improvement so edp means their impact through outcome based assessment tracking participant progress past training the continuous evaluation and feedback enable the edp to refine their curriculum 
delivery method and support mechanism to enhance the effectiveness. The last one is building a vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem. TDP collaborated with government agencies, educational institutions, industry partners, and community stakeholders to build a vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem. So they foster the culture of entrepreneurship by, uh, you know, celebrating success stories, hosting events, and advocating with the policy reforms. So next one is small scale enterprises. Before entering, I mean, seeing about the agency help for the small scale enterprises, you'll see what is in this small scale. Enterprise. The small scale enterprises are defined in different ways depending upon the country's pattern and the uh, stages of development, policy aims, and administrative sector. And SSE is a privately owned and operated business unit composed of small number of employees and have and has a relatively low turnover. But uh, this is defined by a team that the small enterprises are those in which management lies in the hands of one or two people who are responsible for the major decision. So there are certain agencies in our country, they are providing assisting assistant program for a SSU, okay, small scale units. You'll see one by one in little detail. So <clears throat> first one is like uh, National Board Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, we said NABAR, it is established in the year 18, uh, 1982. It's the key institution promoting integrated rural development so it adopts multi-phase approaches to support rural and uh, business enterprises beyond agriculture. NABAR facilitates credit and non-credit assistance to small industry, cottage industry, and rural uh, I mean, artisans. This provides uh, no, counseling, consultancies, conducting training and development program for rural entrepreneurs. So this way they are assisting for SSP. Sorry, SSU. Okay. Uh, then uh, SSC or SSU. Then uh, Rural Small Business Development Center, RSBDC. Uh, it's, it is a sponsored uh, one by NABAR. So this particular uh, team or institution will be sponsored by NABAR and established by the old association for small and medium enterprises. Focus on supporting socially and economically disadvantaged individuals and groups. It offers management and technical support to micro and small entrepreneurs in rural areas. Through various workshops and training programs, the RSBCBC covers a wide range of trades including food processing unit like garment making, candle making and more. So these are the way they are developing entrepreneurial life. These are assisting small scale enterprises. Then uh, National Small Industry Corporation, NS, NSIC, it is established in the year 1955. The aim to promote and foster growth for uh, small business units in India. It plays an important role in various commercial aspects, providing easier higher purchase machines, then uh, procurement and distribution of raw material, export promotion and development, mentoring advisory services and technological inc incubate incubations like implementation of credit rating schemes to improve credit worthiness of the food. Then SIDBI, you know, like Small Industry Development Bank of India, it functions as an apex financial institution providing a direct and indirect financial assistance to meet credit need of a small business organization. It coordinates with other institutions to streamline activities supporting a small enterprises. Uh, next one is National Commission for Enterprises in our Unorganized National Sector, um, NCEUS. It is established in the year uh, 2004, focus on improving productivity, generating employment, and enhancing, enhancing competitive, uh, competitiveness in the informal sector. It develops a linkage with the institution for credit, raw material, and technology and skill development. Things. The next one is a Rural and Women entrepreneur, uh, Entrepreneurial Development Scheme. So the aim to create conductive business environment and enhance institutional and human capa uh, capa uh, no, capacity to support the rural and women entrepreneurs. It provides training, advisory service, and foster and, and I mean, like entrepreneurial dynamics. The next one is World Association for Small and Medium Enterprises. It is an international organization based in India. It emphasizes rural in, uh, industrialization for sustainable growth for rural enterprises. Okay. So it develops action plan and model to support the rural entrepreneurs. Then DIC, you know, district, uh, district industrial centers, it is established in the year eight, uh, 1978, provides integrated administrative support at the district level for industry development. They offer service like scheme identification, feasibility study, credit facilitation, and, you know, extension services and all. And next one is the scheme for fund for the scheme for a scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industry was initiated by the central government 
with an initial allocation of rupees 100 crores in the year 2005. The scheme is implemented by the Ministry of Agro and Rural Industry in collaboration with the state government. The major objectives of this particular scheme are developing a cluster of traditional industry across various regions of the country, enhance of innovative and traditional skill, improvement of technology, and uh, promotion of public and private partnership to make traditional industry competitive, profitable, and sustainable. So next one is role of SSI sector in the economy. How this small scale industries sector I know plays an important role in the economic development. So basically this uh, SSI sector provides various uh, you know uh, activities plays a major role in uh, uh, you know, employ I mean, economic development, so it basically starts with the uh, employment generation, higher uh, productivity like that. So the employment generation in the sense like SSE are renowned for their high labor intensive nature. We're making them, uh, you know, it's like engine for employment generation. It's like SSE is a provide because uh, big corporates are done, they are not able, I mean, they are able to provide that opportunity, but still, uh, they need so much of capital to start a business in one place to give an uh, employment opportunity. But in, in the case of small scale industry, with the less capital, they are able to give more employment opportunities. So the growth rate of employment in SSC often surpasses that the large scale enterprises due to their ability to absorb diverse work, work, sports, uh, no, work forces and all, including uh, skilled and semi skilled and unskilled individuals also, they can be able to absorb for their work. Suppose you are taking as example of IT company and also big corporates. So they are not able to accommodate like unskilled labor, the uneducated labor and all. So, so this particular SSC, SSC or SSI and all, they have an opportunity to absorb all the workforces, like uh, it's different workforces, like that we discussed earlier, the skilled, the semi-skilled, unskilled individuals and all. This employment generation is crucial for rural industrialization and mitigating urban rural migration. So this is the most you know, problematic one in the case of migration. So most of the rural people, I mean, uh, for employment purpose, uh, rural people are migrated to urban to, to, This migration makes so much of, of I mean, slightly you know, environmental issues and all that. So this employment generation is crucial for rural industrialization. Uh, and my, I uh, mean, it, it, it is basically mitigate the urban rural migration part. Okay. That's the basic things help for, you uh, know, this uh, SSI help in the case of society also okay next one is higher productivity uh, <clears throat> despite of uh, no relatively lower levels of investment SSEs exhibit higher productivity of our capital compared to the large scale organization this was I discussed like early so when you want to start a large scale organization you need to you need a huge capital to start a business but in case of SSE it is with the less capital they can able to get benefit out of it right for instance, like an investment of rupees one lakh in the SSC can yield the you know, substantial value addition approximately 4.62 lakhs worth of goods or services, thus contributing significantly to the national productivity. Even though they are, you know, their investment part is less, but they are, because of their productivity, they are able to gain more profit out of it. Right? Next one is poverty elevation. By providing an ample of job opportunity, especially to individuals overlooked by large enterprises, SSC plays an important role in the poverty elevation. These they leverage the traditional skill, advanced technology, innovative marketing strategy to empower individuals, particularly in rural and economic disadvantages area. Then uh, next one is <coughs> better utilization of local resources. SSC are you know adapt to efficiently utilize the local available resources such as land, labor, and raw materials. Unlike large enterprises, they often rely on the import. SSC cater primarily to depend on domestic market, okay, uh, promoting indigenous resources utilization and labor intensive techniques. The next, next one is for tapping for saving. The small scale enterprises exhibit a propensity for saving and investment, which is, you uh, know, blaster their financial resilience and, you know, reduce the dependence on financial, you uh, know, institution, okay, process. This saving culture strengthen and foundation of SSC and you know fosters the stability and uh, sustainable growth. Then uh, utilization of uh, domestic technology SSC 
प्रोडोमेंटली एम्प्लॉय सिंपल एंड लोकली मैन्युफैक्चर्ड मशीनरी टाइलर टू देयर नीड्स तो फोस्टरिंग दिस ग्रोथ ऑफ अ लोकल इंडस्ट्रीज इन्वॉल्व इन मशीन बिल्डिंग एंड इक्विपमेंट प्रोडक्शन दिस अप्रोच प्रमोट लाइक अडाप्टिव कैपेबिलिटी एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल एवोल्यूशन विद इन द डोमेस्टिक मार्केट ओके नेक्स्ट वन इज रिलीजियन सॉरी रिलीजियन बैलेंस एंड रूरल सॉरी रीजनल बैलेंस एंड रूरल डेवलपमेंट एस एस सी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट सिग्निफिकेंटली टू रीजनल बैलेंस एंड नो लोकेटिंग इन अ स्मॉल टाउन एंड रूरल एरियाज दस दिस नो डिसप्रिंग लाइक इंडस्ट्रियल एक्टिविटीज बियॉन्ड द अर्बन सेंटर दिस लेबर इंटेंसिव टेक्नोलॉजी अलाइन विद द lower wage rates uh, prevalent in the rural setting rubbing rural urban uh, migration and boosting the local economy next one is export contribution despite of their scale ssc uh, plays uh, <clears throat> no very very crucial or important role in uh, india's export sector accounting for approximately 35% of the total export the exporter lab i mean the export labor intensive goods like, uh, like garments leather products gems and uh, Process food significantly contributing to foreign exchange earning. Next one is contribution to decentralization by spreading the industrial activities across a diverse location. SSC prevent wealth concentration in urban centers, um, promoting equitable wealth distribution and preventing accumulation of economic power in a few hands. The next one is complementary to large scale industry. Uh, SSC often a source a supplier of components, spare parts, and accessory to the large scale industry facilitating their operation additionally they play a very important role in distributing a finished goods product by a large enterprises underscoring their complementary relationship actually before this we are trying to tell you all things like these are the materials mostly have compiled from uh, epg parshala material and uh, gyan process this one okay and e adhyan so this from where uh, from these places only have compiled this materials okay Coming to the last part of your uh, syllabus, point like SSI units, failure, cause, and preventive measures. What are the reason for the failures? Basically, there are two different causes for failures for SSI uh, units. Basically, one is internal cause. other one is external causes internal cause in the sense mismanagement for example first one is like mismanagement the poor decision making ineffective leadership and inadequate uh, planning can lead to operational inefficiency and financial instability so this impact for lack of clear direction ineffective resource allocation and failure to adopt changing circumstances can result in business failure so how we can prevent this uh to implement robust management practices including strategic planning effective leadership and regular uh performance monitoring so the investment in the management training and ment um, mentorship program as a for a key personnel so based on this we can able to prevent this mismanagement issue next one is financial issue financial issue like basically like we can say insufficient uh, working capital poor financial planning and the difficult in securing loans or investment can lead to cash flow problem and financial distress so what will happen if you are having this issues then there will be an inability to meet the operational efficiency suppose you are not having a sufficient working capital with you so this will lead for a operational uh, i know if inefficiency it will create like you can able to do our business better suppose you are not having a proper working capital like uh, with your hand then it will be very difficult to run a business then um fund growth initiatives and the manage the uh, managing debt obligation can also lead to business in insolvency so if you are not having the proper working capital with you so you are not able to repay the small like uh, your to your creditors and all so you need to be pay on a monthly basis like you need to pay, pay on a correct time otherwise they won't give you back uh, any parametrical supply and all the supply description will be happen then if you are not repaying the interest in a proper time in a beginning they will like uh, to the debt owners then it will be difficult for us to sustain a business it will, will always lead for an insolvency and then preventive measures how we can prevent this particular uh, financial issue conduct the uh, comprehensive financial planning including budgeting cash flow forecasting and risk management explore alternative financing options and establish strong relationship with the financial institutions
then uh, fault project selections choosing the wrong project okay so uh, like or else in, in appropriate project so you may study this one in your uh, financial management part like using the capital budgeting uh, techniques and all you can use the appropriate methods to choose the best projects and all, right so what is the issues will be there suppose choosing inappropriate projects or venture without proper feasibility analysis can result in resource wastage and project failure suppose you are investing in a, for a particular page, uh, part of uh, like you are going for expansion of your business you are starting a new uh, outlet in other one place so for in that particular place you have, uh, if you are not conducting any proper market survey and all if you are starting a business it may lead to failure of that uh, particular place then you can go to close that particular branch so this uh, is the called like choosing an inappropriate project, pro projects or ventures then what will be the impact so the investment in a non viable project can drain the financial resource and divert attention from more pressing opportunity how we can prevent this to conduct the project feasibility study including market analysis cost benefit assessment and risk evaluation okay so if you need to if you are conducting all the things you can able to prevent the uh, project uh, uh, you know uh, you know you can able to choose the better project okay so engage industry experts like you need to for going for this uh, you know preventive measures like you can engage industry experts and consult into the uh, consultants to evaluate the project viability before implementation next one is marketing problem so in the required market research ineffective marketing strategy and failure to reach the target customers can hinder business growth okay so next uh, like what will be the impact suppose if you are not uh, doing the proper market research or ineffective managing strategies and all if you are not having you will be going for a poor market penetration low sales volume will be there declining the customer base can leads to revenue stagnation so what will happen if you are if you are not having a proper revenue if you are not having a proper revenue you are not able to repay your uh, creditors you are not able to repay your uh, debt owners so if, because whether you are having profit or not you need to repay the interest to the debt owners if you are not doing that then obviously you lead for a insolvency okay preventive measures the so how we can prevent this marketing problem so investment in market research to understand customer needs preference and market trends develop a target marketing strategy and leveraging the digital platform for effective customer outreach like uh, next one is production challenges issue relating to production process quality control and operational efficiency can impact the product quality and delivery time like right? it reduce the productivity increase cost and customer dissatisfaction due to inconsistent product quality or delay so how we can prevent so implement lean uh, you know manufacturing practices quality control system continuous process improvement so investing in the technology upgrades and employee training to enhance the production process okay so what are the external causes like first one is economic factor economic downturns inflation fluctuation in the market demand can affect the consumer spending pattern business viability so this will reduce the cost and swing the market opportunity and price pricing pressure on uh, can you uh, know strain the ssi finances okay then what how will um, you know uh, go for how will prevent this one diverse product offering instead of going with one product you can go for a differentiation different product marketing like you can say the example of itc and also uh, uh, itc is supplying uh, you know uh, eatables and they are supplying uh, notebooks and also they are having many many items in there like even if you take like example of reliance and also they are having multiple business owners so those are the things will be required uh, in case of this kind of thing the new market ex, uh, explore the new market and maintain financial resources to weather economic uncertainties okay <clears throat> stay agile and responsive to the market dynamics and next one is technological ups, uh, obsolescence so failure to adopt or adopt the technology advancement can render ssi the less competitive and you know relevant in the market so if you are not adopting the technology then and there so it will be very difficult for us okay to sustain in the market so you can obviously reduce the efficiency higher production cost will happen that inferior product quality compared to the technological advanced competitor so how we can how we can prevent this one invest in the technology upgradation automation and digital transformation in the initiatives stay informed about the industry trends and embrace like innovation to enhance competitiveness the next one is policy and regulatory environment so issues like uh, unfavorable government policy complex regulations and uh, bureaucratic uh, bureaucratic hurdles can create barriers to the business growth and operations 
the complaints and challenges incurred cause legal uncertainty can hinder the SSI expansion and investment. So how, how we can prevent engaging the policy makers and industry association to advocate for policy reforms that support SSI development, stay updated on regulatory changes and seek legal counsel to ensure the compliances. The next one is market competitions. In terms of competition from a larger enterprises uh, or other SSI can uh, you know, strain the resources and erode market shares. So there will be a pricing pressure, loss of customers, reduced profitability due to high high end competitions. How we can prevent differentiating product and services through innovation, quality improvement, or niche marketing. So collaborate with the industry partners and the explore strategic alliances to enhance the competitiveness. The next one is like uh, infrastructure constraints, inadequate in infrastructure such as uh, unreliable power supply, transportation limitation, communication challenges can disrupt operation. Like uh, so this production delay will happen, uh, increased cost will happen, supply chain disruptions will be happen due to the infrastructure deficiencies. So how we can prevent, so to advocate infrastructure improvements with the local authorities and the industry stakeholders, explore alternative logistic solution and invest in the supply chain resilience strategies. Then last one is raw material availability. So shortage or, shortage or fluctuation in raw material supply can disturb the production schedule and impact product uh, quality so it will if you are having any impact with the raw material obviously it will decrease increase the production cost and the uh, inventory management challenges will happen and supply chain disruption will be happen so how we can provide so diverse way raw material sources instead of uh, relying on one particular source you need to go for a diverse way raw material sources establish such uh, supply chain partnership and maintain uh, buffer stock to mitigate the supply risk so this is the last part of your syllabus like turnover and strategy so what do you mean by basically the turnover strategy turnover strategy refers to the measures taken by the management to convert a last making company into the profit making one so that the company failures then how we can able to get back then that will be called as turnover strategy this strategy involves comprehensive reassessment of all the aspects of business operation from cash flow and marketing to profit generation then uh, with aim of uh, reversing the negative trend and boosting operational efficiency and productivity the ultimate goal is to revive the business okay <clears throat> transforming its tragedy to from a uh what is it from a declining to the growth strategy so the growth path so that is an important thing in case of turnover strategy so there are uh, things to be there to turn around turn around, turn around uh, you know failing a small scale industry is required to systematic approach that address both internal and external challenges okay first one is identifying the root cause you need to identify the root cause why the company is going for a failure so before implementing the turnover strategy it is, good, it is very important to diagnose the root cause of the SSA failure it could uh, you know involve analyzing financial statement conduct the uh, operational audit assessing the market dynamics common issues like uh, uh, may include mismanagement, financial problem, operational efficiency, market challenges and all. So you need to identify what is the root cause. Then uh, some. Then after that, you can go for a financial restructuring, evaluate the financial aid, conduct the comprehensive financial analysis to understand the cash flow issue, debt burden and uh, liquidity constraints. So you need to uh, means identify and restructure the things. Then uh, next one is like re debt restructuring. Uh, we need to evaluate their financial health and then go for a debt restructuring. Negotiate with the creditors to restructure the debt, extend repayment terms and explore uh, refinancing options and all right. Then working capital optimization this is an important thing in case of liquidation part. So implement, uh, not liquidation, liquidity, okay. Uh, <clears throat> implement, implement measures to optimize working capital management such as improving inventory turnover and reducing receivables. And next one is operational efficiency uh, process optimization identify and eliminate operational bottlenecks into production in uh, <coughs> workflows and enhance supply chain management then uh, resource utilization enhance the productivity by optimize the uh, resource allocation and improving labor efficiency and the uh, reducing usage next one is market diversification so this is also kind of a strategy uh, you can go for a market diversification so you need to explore for a new market identify the untapped untapped uh, market segment and geographical areas to diverse customers um, base and reduce diverse customer base and reduce uh, dependency on the existing market and product di diversification this also means, uh, means important part 
So instead of depending on one particular product, we can go for a making or modifying the other product. I mean, same product. Considering expanding a product offering or modifying the existing product to meet the evaluation, evaluating the customer needs. Then uh, this will be like a Porter's model, no? Basically, uh, discussing like product differentiation, uh, pricing strategy, and then uh, what is it? Focus area marketing and all those other things. Then technological upgradation, invest in technology, upgrade the machinery and equipment to improve the productivity, quality and operational efficiency, adopt digital solution, leverage the digital tools to for inventory management, customer relationship management and marketing and all. Then skill development, employee training, invest in the skill development program to enhance workforce capabilities and the adaptability to the new technology and promote continuous learning, fostering, uh, no, foster a culture called continuous improvement and innovation within the organization then next one is uh, product innovation um, <clears throat> r&d initiatives r&d initiatives like you know, when you are going for a product innovation you need to go for like r&d initiatives um, in, invest in the r&d to develop innovative product and improve existing offering then adopt market trends to Stay with the, we need to always stay with the market trends and customer preference to remain competitive. If you are outdated, if you are selling outdated products, you are not able to sustain in the market. And next one is strategic alliance. It's important part in case of turnaround strategy. Collaborate with the partner. For a strategic alliance or a joint venture, uh, with the uh, complementary business to leverage, share the resources and market expertise. Pooling of resources, uh, you can pooling the resources like for uh, marketing, distribution and the technology sharing. Next, next one is cost leadership, sir. Cost control. So, cost monitoring is important thing. Implement the rigorous cost control measure to reduce overheads uh, and eliminate uh, and non-essential expenses. So, if you are controlling the cost, you can able to get back the business from a failure. Then, uh, focus on efficiency. Encourage a culture of cost con uh, consciousness and efficiency throughout the organization. Then, last one is legal and regulatory compliance. Ensure compliance, address any legal or regulatory issues of, uh, you know, prominently to avoid disruptions under legal uh, <clears throat> complications. So then risk management, mitigate the complications risk through proactive measures and adhere the industry standards. So if you are following the industry standards, it will be able to sustain. Then turn over leadership, inspire and motivate to provide a strong leadership to inspire confidence and motivate the employees and post a sense of uh, purpose and directions. And... Uh, <clears throat> And from the turnover leadership, we need to communicate clearly our vision to our all the stakeholders of like stakeholders in the sense like our employees and our uh, suppliers and like that, and our distributors and also clearly communicate the turnover and plan goals and milestones to all the stakeholders. And last part of your thing is like monitor progress. After doing all the things, you need to monitor the progress, the continuous evaluation, regular assess the eff effectiveness of implemented strategy through key performance indicators and performance metrics. Adaptability, remain in a flexible and adaptive, making adjustment to strategy based on evolving market conditions and feedback. So with this, I'll stop this. Up to this, your second is get over. If you have any doubt, you can discuss now. Hmm, the silence uh, shows like you don't have any doubt, so uh, I'll come to an end for this session. Thank you all. Thank you for your patience. Thank you.